Escalade, Deion Sanders. There's a lot of star power in the state of Mississippi right now at the head football coaching ranks. He's going to attract people, and he's going to get them to the next level. For him to have this first job at HBCU is monumental. It definitely means something to me and so many HBCU grads out there. Start calling me Coach Brown from now on, because I'm not going to answer anything else. You heard the Hall of Famer Deion Sanders serving notice that the Coach Prime era is underway as he and his Jackson State Tigers head to Eddie Robinson Stadium in Grambling, Louisiana. Folks, things may never be the same in black college football. Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. It's where the Tigers reside, where the Tigers reside too of Black College Football's Blue Bloods, Jackson State, and Grambling State in their first SWAC game of the season. We are delighted, honored, and blessed to be here with you alongside the former Howard University and NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green. Look, there has been so much that's transpired since the last time we called a college football game. COVID obviously coming into play, but when we talk to these coaches, they are ready to play football. They have to be excited. I mean, the world has changed from a season ago. And you think about everything for HBCUs and FCS football programs, their football will be played in the spring. Happy these young student athletes have an opportunity to play some football and try and get back to some sense of normalcy. Well, there was so much hype, so much attention ever since Deion Sanders was hired as the head coach of Jackson State. High expectations coming out of the state of Mississippi. It's arguably the biggest news to come across black college football ever. Absolutely. You know, it well deserved so. Jackson State taking a chance, going out there and hiring Deion Sanders, the Hall of Fame player. However, you talk to a guy like Broderick Fobbs and he says, Coach Prime is not playing He's coaching. He's going to have to cut his teeth. And what a great challenge in Coach Prime's first conference start at the legendary, historic home of Grambling State University, where a guy by the name of Coach Eddie Robinson coach. They love their football. We'll see what the prime time era looks like in Jackson State. Well, I tell you, if you look at this series, it's belonged to Grambling over the last 10 games. The Tigers have won nine of them. And so this is going to be an interesting game today. All eyes on the field here in Grambling, Louisiana, as the Tigers riding a 16-game home win streak. And we are underway as Grambling will get the ball first. This one bouncing around a little bit and taking down quickly in the backfield, or excuse me, down is C.J. Russell. C.J. Russell inside the 15 yards, and that's where Grambling State University will begin their 2021 football season. Led by Jeremy Hickbottom, the five, fifth year senior, rather, out of Mobile, Alabama. And Hickbottom has a lot to prove. He's had like a 500 record as a quarterback. Not acceptable in terms of grambling legendary quarterbacks. So Coach Fobb says he deserves the opportunity to try and become a more of a winning quarterback. But we will see two quarterbacks from grambling today. Whistle before the first play could even get started. And to your point, Jay, when you think about Hickbottom, last year's leading rusher. The eight. Half the distance to the goal, it's first down. Tony Ross, our official, but Hickbottom, leading rusher and passer from last season. And, and Coach Fobb said, hey, look, you had an average season, and since you've been a two-year starter in this program, we want to see more. How can you build upon some things and maybe some early game jitters as Grambling State trying to get their communication right? Offense, number 68, at the distance to the goal, it's first down. And let's not forget, Jackson State has the advantage of having played a game already this season. Two weeks ago when they played Edward Waters, this is the first contest for Grambling. And I think we're seeing in this first drive two mental errors with the false starts. He called on the left tackle, Egan Atkins, the first run up the middle and push back Jackson State is looking to build upon what they thought was a pretty good defense surrounded by 
last year's SWAT Defensive Player of the Year in Keontae Hampton and Keelan Elder didn't get too far. That's more movement. Yeah. Whistles for the official already busy. Education false start against the Tigers. Put it back all the way back to the three yard line. Having some technical difficulties here, but this is not the way you want to start your season, your first offensive possession of the spring. Yeah, moving backwards, three plays. They've only run one play from scrimmage so far, but they've had three penalties. They've got to settle down, focus. I know it's been a while. They're a little bit antsy, particularly on the offensive line, but they can't keep making those mental errors. Hand off to Keelan Elder, and Elder is able to push the pile a little bit. And, Jay, I think it's interesting to note that this is a new offensive line for Grambling State, given the fact that they graduated several, and so they're having to work to gel together. Add to that, they haven't played in, like, nearly two seasons. Yeah, and this line is unproven, untested, but Coach Mobs believes he's got a pretty good unit up front. We'll see how they pan out this football game. Bottom dropping back, surveys, tucks it, runs, and he's tackled just before the 10-yard line on third and 17. Credit Brian Mitchell with the tackle. And, and you, you don't go wrong just picking up a couple yards in that situation. Not worth the risk of throwing the football down the field, possibly having to turn over an interception. You're going to lose some field position here. Get what you can and let your special teams try and change the battle of field position after a very, very disappointing first drive to start off the spring football season for Grambling. So Garrett Urban, redshirt junior out of Houston, Texas, back to punt from his own end zone. Warren Newman on the return and a bad kick there, picked up quickly. And on the return, there's Deshaun Warren, the Juco transfer, new to Jackson State, and they're giving his offense great field position to start off this first sweat game for he, Coach Prime, and many others. And what a great job of recognition by Warren. This is going to be a rugby-style kick that doesn't elevate. Low-line drive, so what does he do? He sees it coming right towards him, feels it cleanly, then becomes a receiver, showing the athleticism, picking up positive yards, and giving Jackson State great field position. Good look there, John Warren. They like that kid. Oh, yeah. Born the junior college transfer, starting cornerback, who Coach Prime said is an NFL talent. And if you got Deion Sanders saying you're an NFL talent, well, I'm going to take his word for it. First play, it's Jalen Jones, and Jones <laughs> absorbing some contact there. The first to get to him was Lewis Mathis. Matthews. Look Matthews chasing him down from his linebacker position, and what a nice finishing tackle by number 25, Devin Near Martin, one of the best cornerbacks in the conference. Jones, who transferred over from Florida a couple seasons ago. We saw him a little bit. There was a bit of a coaching carousel for this Jackson State team. They went through three different quarterbacks throughout the season now. Jones has his opportunity to lead the charge out quickly and nowhere to go. There's Devin Air Martin again. I told you Martin can play, but when you talk about Jackson State offensively, this spring, it's going through Jalen Jones. The transfer from the University of Florida, very highly recruited, a four-star athlete, dual-threat passer. So he had a great game against Edward Waters, but this is not an Edward Waters defense you're going to see today. You're going to see the G-men of Grambling State, a defense that can fly around the football field, speed on the perimeter, his work's going to be cut out for him this afternoon. We'll see what they can do inside the red zone. We talked about great position, and there he is, the touchdown pass. Corey Reed on the receiving end, and Jackson State is on the board first. One thing I like about Jackson State, they have big wide receivers, two six-foot-three-inch wide receivers. If you find a one-on-one -on -one matchup, body him up, not afraid to take the contact and get to the end zone. Great job by Corey Reed. Thirteen yard touchdown pass good on for the extra point is Lane, excuse me, Noah Anderson and it's good. Seven nothing Jackson State. Coach Prime 
feeling it. But we go back to the play that set it all up. The great bunt return to put him in wonderful field position, and the Tiger is able to capitalize on the road. Doctor about Amovig. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Last time, Grambling State was able to hoist the Celebration Bowl Trophy 2016. In fact, the only SWAC team to be able to do so, Broderick Fobbs, in his seventh season as head coach, has done a tremendous job in helping to restore the legacy, the tradition of Grambling State football. And you would expect that because he's a Grambling man. So he played at Grambling. His father coached at Grambling. He's a disciple of Eddie Robinson. So Broderick Fobbs knows what it takes to be a G-man, as they like to call him, and proud tradition. And he's done a great job heading up his university. Well, opportunity here on the return for Grambling to get some good yards. And how about C.J. Russell bringing him out to near the 40-yard line? So that's great starting field position, given the fact the opening drive, they were going backwards. Let's see if they could go forward this time. And I think, although the outside of the penalties, we did see a little surge in their offensive line. We saw Elder able to get to the edge a little bit, but take away the penalties. I thought the offensive line showed some signs like they may be able to control the line of scrimmage. I think one of the keys for Graham is going to be, can they run the football? The strength of their offense, their three-tier system at running back led by Elder. With C.J. Russell on the carry trying to get pushed on that weak side and he picks up a couple of yards. Well, that's what we'll see a kind of a couple of different running backs in the backfield. Keelan Elder, C.J. Russell. Russell, one of those home run hitters for this Tiger group. I mean, special talent. You're talking about a guy with 18 carries and 109 yards rushing in his career. Just a freshman, so they say he's going to be special. And if he can continue to average over five yards a carry. That's what makes you a special back, difference maker. Another penalty marker on the field. We'll get the call. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, second down. And, and, and here's what you do in this situation, Tiff. Everybody's got the jitters right now. You know, we talked about the four new first-time starters on the offensive line. Simplify it as a quarterback. Go up there and maybe say, I'm going first down, or I'm not going hard count. I've got to simplify the cadence until we get some type of offensive rhythm. Big bottom delivers across the middle. Catches made by Daryl Clark. Daryl Clark, who is a terrific story, a tough, strong kid. Who's getting his first start in nearly two years. Yeah, missed the season a season ago. Getting an opportunity to play football again. One of those feel-good stories we'll tell you about a little bit later on. Big bottom on the carry, and he's met quickly by Aubrey Miller Jr. Jr., the transfer middle linebacker for Missouri, from Missouri, rather. And he delivered a nice blow, but seven-yard pickup for Hickbottom. Second and three now for the Tigers. They're trying to move the ball. And look, they're doing a good job, like you said, despite the fact that they've already had four Time false starts. The, the previous play is on the further review. I wonder if they're taking a look at the end of the play. It was a nice run by Hickbottom, but I wonder did he get hit in the head, so possibly looking at targeting. We've seen college football landscape change with that for the better, for the safety of the players, and they've got to take a look at it. Another look at it right here. Close. Yeah. Is that the launch, you know? And it's unfortunate, but when he spins, I think the key is going to be do they think he launched into him? I, you know, <laughs> the only way I see it, if you're saying he launched, then that's it. Defenses player. But the quarterback got spun around. There were two defenders on him that kind of twisted him and brought his helmet into the vicinity. But if, I, if I'm Grambling State, that was a launch. 
that was a launch. And I think what you're starting to see more officials do is say, could he have avoided that type of hit? Well, you see the targeting rules on the screen and just kind of trying to get some clarification here. 15 yard penalty he could be ruled ineligible for the rest of the game if that launch. But they do indeed see that it was a launch. And it was called from by the booth, so there was no penalty thrown on the field. Booth review, and I actually think they got it right. I think the booth saw something and watch him come in. That's that's a launch. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but you got to go. There's almost no place for this that type of play in college football now. And it looked like it even may have dislodged a contact for Jeremy Hickbottom, as you saw him going back to the sideline and trying to yeah. get that contact corrected in that left eye. Yep. And that, that would be. There's no foul for targeting on the previous play. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, well then. <laughs> I love Jay. you. That's, that's fortunate for Jackson State. I'm 0-1 to start the season. Trust me, I won't get this right because it's so subjective. My batting average is below the Mendoza line. Right. Well, you know what, Jay? To your point, you talked about just the spin part. You know, he, he was spinning around, and so it was kind of hard. Boom, boom, bang. But it was, it was a tough one. I thought he launched. But when you slow it down, you see so many different things, how it looks. But they're fortunate. Right. Aubrey Miller, we talked about getting the start at middle linebacker for Jackson State able to stay in this football game. Hickbottom delivers the pass, and it's broken up incomplete to John Warren right there on the coverage. Warren, a Maryland product, who uh, had a number of different off number of different choices to go to, decided to flip on signing day to join Coach Prime at Jackson State. Quick pass and catch. And they make it look easy. When, when the offense is in rhythm, you have the quarterback do a semi-roll. DJ Clark able to get open in the flat for his second catch of the day. And Grambling responding after a horrible-looking first drive to start this game. Offense showing some signs of life here in their second drive, moving the ball efficiently. Five-yard gain, good enough for a first down. Hick bottom. Big hit there, delivered, hello, right in the face, and ouch, that one had to hurt. Javion Adams, the true freshman out of Olive Branch. Olive Branch, uh, hello. They're giving up some yards, but they're bringing the hat as well. You see helmets flying around the football, and the young freshman, true freshman, Javion Adams, delivers a blow from his safety position. Another completion here for Hickbottom and almost to the end zone was Darrell James. James, the receiving tight end, who was really coming to his own during the offseason and nearly cross Bader. And it all starts with the protection up front. We have not seen Jackson State able to get any penetration on the pocket. The tight end running up the seam, untouched. Nice throw, nice catch. Grambling is deep in the red zone. That one good for 26 yards and now working fo first and goal from their own two. Elder coming up short on the carry. I think if you're grambling, don't show your hand. Continue to spread them out. If you're going to go shotgun downfield, you see how Jackson State, the white jerseys are crowding the box. They're surrounding it a little bit. You have to give them that threat that you're going to run some type of stretch play outside, which is the strength of the running game for Grambling. Bunching it in, I think, favors Jackson State. you got to send somebody in motion to confuse them. Well, they decide to do that, and call. calling his own number is Jeremy Hickbottom, and his first touchdown of the season. Grambling State's on the board. Great job by Hickbottom. You pack the box in there, and then you just gotta hand off the ball or call your own number if they dive in. Great recognition and able to get into the end zone pretty much untouched. Garrett Urban with the chance to tie it up. 
Does that hold good? And complete. Eight plays, 61 yards, capped off by a Jeremy Hickbottom touchdown run. We're all knotted at seven. Well, these are hallowed grounds back here at Eddie Robinson Stadium. It's uh, starting to feel like football, and I'm being told it smells that way inside the stadium. About 50% capacity, the world fame marching Tiger Band cheerleaders. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm doing a little roll from Tampa, Florida right here. I'm feeling good. How about you, Jay, over in uh, the DMV? Now, one thing you have to distinguish, when you go to Grambling and the tailgate and when it smells like football, it's not gumbo. Now, Grambling is in northern Louisiana, so you're talking about crawfish and the crab bowls and the etouffee, so a little bit different in northern Louisiana cuisine and southern Louisiana cuisine there, but anywhere you go, you can't go wrong with tailgating in the state of Louisiana and the smell of football. It is here and upon us and already an exciting start to this game. Now, to see, it may have been. So this is this is the the joy and the beauty of calling games from home. Sometimes you can see things and pick up the action. Obviously, nothing like being there. I think that puff or that kick was muff, but it was touch while in play. So that would be ruled a safety. Now, was, or, it the, me, touch was it the return man that touched it? A touchback. Well, you see the official signaling touchback. Let's hear from Tony Ross. It's a touchback. See Josh so, Littles right there. Explain this, Jay. That, that's perfectly fine. He made the muff with the contact, but then you can still get it. He doesn't come out of the end zone, so he's there. So that is a time to give him the ball at the 25-yard line. That's Will Jackson State. We'll start things. And now I think we'll get a, a little sense of what the primetime offense is going to look like. Offensive coordinator Jason Phillips says we want to be a uh, speedy, tough, fast, disciplined offense stretching the field. Well, they took advantage of the short field position last time. Now let's see what they do starting on their own 25. The handoff to Kamani Clark. And Clark is bottled up quickly. Clark, the sophomore out of Ocala. And he's a every down back for Coach Prime. We'll see if they can get him in space a little bit more. Really quick, elusive back. Clark once again, and really not much room to run. What we saw a couple of weeks ago against Edward Waters College and NAI opponent. They had great success here at Grambling State playing them a little different. And this Grambling, you know, they've been built on defense and the, the strength of their defense is their defensive line. When you talk to Coach Fobbs and defensive coordinator Everett Todd, they lost seven of their nine linebackers from a season ago. So they've got question marks there, but if the D-line can continue to stuff the run, this can be an effective group. Jones on the pass and incomplete. There was Dalen Baldwin in the area. That brings up fourth down. And, and this is a great play by number six, Hershey Williams. And when you're playing zone coverage, you keep your eyes on the quarterback, which you call dropping zone. Jones doesn't even see him as he's dropping underneath. Good job of recognition by Williams. Watch that drop. You go curl to flat. He's in the curl. The throw comes. He's able to get a hand on it. Jones fortunate that was not an interception. I don't think he saw him. McGregor back to punt. And there's Devonair Martin. Martin up that left side. Pulled jersey and gets just near midfield. So again, great starting position 
for the Grambling State Tigers. This one is an exciting one. Tigers have won. With Infinity Now. Lease the 2021 Infinity QX50 for $379 a month at your local Infinity retailer. Well, there's been so much that's taken place in the offseason within the SWAC. Some big news. Alcorn State not competing in this spring season, so that leaves the door wide open in the East. Meanwhile, coming in fall, Bethune Cookman and Florida AM decide to take their talents to the SWAC. We'll get a chance to see the Rattlers and the Wildcats. Great interstate rivalry there, and Deion Sanders and his crew nodded at 7-7 seven, seven all. But here's the deal. Jackson State has a chance to win that swag East with Alcorn State, who has reigned supreme over the last several years, to now be able to perhaps see a new champion. I, mean, I think Alcorn's been the premier university in football either east or west for the past six years. Very good football program. They're led by Fred McNair. A little disappointed they elected not to play, but obviously with can't blame anybody for not playing football this spring considering the situation at the school with the pandemic going on. But the big news, I think the second biggest story of the HBCU offseason besides Coach Prime going to Jackson State was Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman leaving the MEAC and going to the SWAC sent ripples down the HBCU college football landscape. On nice second throw. and 15. And the completion to Darrell James and Hickbottom looking comfortable back there. Yeah, the, the pocket's giving him time, and you cannot continue to allow a tight end to go with a free release down the middle of the field. By the time he gets to the safety, they're doing a good job of finding the crease between the middle linebacker, Miller, and the safety, Adams. So they're able to convert and here again another pass on the outside this time it's complete once more that's Damian brooks and hickbottom is picking him apart and i think before we give hickbottom all the credit that offensive line and we've seen him get touched once and that was when they brought an additional rusher but when they don't blitz the defensive front four for jackson state is not getting to the quarterback and hickbottom is making a pay once he more is. completion, I think that, that that was the question mark of how well with this offensive line tech hit bottom this season. And, and he's just, he's pitching right now. He's pitching and catching, throwing and catching, getting the most out of his pre-snap read. The offensive line is doing their job. Great start and great recognition by Hickbottom. As we mentioned, this young man's been a two-year starter. This will be his third year, had high expectation, taking over the program, and Right now, he looks very comfortable in the pocket. Flags on the play. Flags on the play. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Jay, how many penalties have we seen up front for Grambling State along start. the line? Offense, number 51. Five-yard penalty and second down. I'm guessing five. <laughs> five, in spite of those. We saw three on the first three consecutive penalties on the to start the game, but still this offense when they don't shoot themselves in the foot with the penalty able to move the ball against this Jackson State defense. Bottom surveys has time, tucks it and run almost to the end zone, and he's being spun around. Khalil Arrington was the one who was trying to lasso him down. I mean, look at the pocket and look at the time. You're in the red zone. You are not supposed to have that clean a pocket with that much time to read the defense and then still able to run the football there. Takes a hit towards the end. That could be another targeting right there. 32, the freshman, Javian Adams, lowered his helmet. If they take a look at that one, that's another one that possibly could be a boot review for targeting. The results of the play is the first down. The previous play is on the further review. Did you see that, Tiff? When number 32, Javian Adams, who we've seen make some aggressive hits. But it seemed like at the end of that run, that was a launch. But I'm 0 for 1, right? So I, I really need to be quiet <laughs> since I missed on the first one, which I don't know how. 
Oh, but right that's, there, no, that's helmet that's, to helmet. Yep, pretty clear cut. Well, at least in my eyes. So I would be, I would stand with. Textbook, why they have the rule. You see, as he approaches, he lowers the helmet. He can no longer see what he's going to hit. That is helmet on helmet. That is targeting. That is what the rule is there for, for player safety. And we've seen Adams make some plays, and he's just a freshman. And he's going to have to learn that you cannot take these type of hits or make these type of hits on opposing players. Let's take another look at it here. He lowers his head, launches right for helmet to helmet contact. And After further review, it has been determined that number 32 is charged with targeting. Number 32 will be disqualified from the rest of the game. It's be an automatic first down on the one yard line. Maybe that's something that the defensive coordinator, Dennis Thurman, has to work with his football team. You want them aggressive, but you have to play smarter. We've seen two plays that could have been player ejections. Miller was fortunate he was not ejected for what I thought was targeting earlier. And this time, Adams is caught for targeting. So they're starting. Strong safety gone. JV and Adams for the remainder of the game. First and goal. Inside the one for Grambling State and another opportunity for the Tigers to capitalize here as Jeremy Hickbottom has already gotten off to a great start. Hand off to Elder and that was easy right up the gut. Grambling State does it again. You see Elder throwing up the hooks from Omega Sci-Fi. He's a Q. He's feeling good right now. I just give him some hard blocking up front, downhill running, and Keelian Elder in the end zone. What is it, Omega Sci-Fi Incorporated? Founded That's on the right. campus of Howard University, right? Got to mention Howard in the broadcast sooner or later, but that's part of the culture, which is HBCU. Oh, partner. You know, when you look at a, a guy like Keelan Elder, redshirt sophomore, originally out of Dallas, Texas, he has been fueled by football after having to overcome some family tragedy. His older brother died in an accident, in a freak accident of a drowning uh, accident when he was just a, a youngster, just before his 16th birthday. And so Keelan Elder, who uh, certainly has been uh, brought closer to football, but also his father as well, who played football, great running back here at Grambling State, played for coach Eddie Robinson. This is a young man who is just a great example of perseverance and overcoming adversity. And sometimes you take tragedy and you turn into something triumphant so with the loss of his older brother the father Raymond Elder said you know what he's gonna do now it's on you and Keelan was kind of going through the motions in high school didn't have a lot of scholarship offers but the father-son bond got so strong that senior year that Elder became a really good football player and his very first scholarship offer came from Broderick Bob to Grambling it's been a match made in heaven And, and Jay, what makes this story all the more interesting and, you know, everybody is kind of like some degrees of separation. Ray Elder actually coached with Coach Prime uh, in that Truth Youth Football League started by Deion Sanders. I mean, imagine that. So Deion in his first game as a head coach, Coach Prime's first game, he's coaching against Keelan Elder, who he's known since he was a youngster. <laughs> so that story there, it, that's kind of what you get in the HBCU culture. You know, everybody's connected, know somebody that knows somebody. And I'm sure that Coach Prime is proud of the job that the younger elder has done. I had a great conversation with the senior elder. 
reminiscent on some of the good old days. As Kamani Clark is looking strong there on the run, loses it at the end, but he was down. Kamani Clark, sorry to cut you off, Jay, but outstanding vision here and balance. Yeah, great job in the balance and the spin move. And, uh, it's fortunate they may take a look, see if that ball was coming out on the way to the ground, but Jackson State recovered anyway. Jones able to shed a tackler, gets out of bounds. And one of the things I've noticed over the years in covering Grambling defensively with all that speed, you don't beat them sideline to sideline. Too fast. Linebackers with speed, secondary with speed. You have to be able to run the ball in between the tackles like we saw Clark do on the previous run. But you try to run sideways against his G-man defense, they will catch you. There, catching Clark in the backfield, wrapped up quickly. Several jerseys surrounding him. One of the first to get there, number 48, Brian Powell. Hasn't played a lot, unproven, new to the program. However, they're going to teach speed. Defensive coordinator Ever Todd is going to keep speed on the field at that linebacker position. You saw the recognition. Good tackle behind the line of scrimmage for Powell. Under three minutes to go in the opening quarter, third and nine for Jackson State. Jones able to wiggle his way out the pocket. A dual threat right here showing off his legs. Knocked out of bounds by Marquise Britton. There you saw a defensive coordinator's worst nightmare, a dual threat quarterback. You take away all the passing lanes, but you leave him one crease in which he can escape. Jalen Jones, we talked about the athleticism. Nice heady play to pick up the first down. Again, handoff here to Kamani Clark. Excuse me, Tyson Alexander, who's given Clark a spell in the backfield. Helmet pops off for one of the Grambling players. Or on the trot to the sideline, that was Marquise Dotson. Martavius Dotson, excuse me. Five yard pickup on the play, second down. Jones looking on the outside. That's Corey Reed who has the touchdown catch earlier and just short of the marker. And I like the play saw the play call by Jason Phillips. If you can't really run the ball, you know, sideways, off tackles the way the Jackson State wants to, get the ball in the hands of those big wide receivers you have. If you've got two six foot three inch wide receivers, use them as blockers, as catchers, as runners, and able to pick up positive yards. Third and one, and pulling forward in the pile was Kamani Clark, and Clark may have fumbled the football, and it's going to Grambling State. Brian Powell, Defense. once again. Defense helping out, just on his way to the ground. That ball pops out. Might have been a combination of Powell on the recovery, but it seemed like number 91, Cameron Richardson, on his way to the ground, able to dislodge that Throwing football, the put it on the turf. Recover by the defense. The previous play is on further review. Clark, hopefully thinks said okay let's take a review maybe my knee was down maybe I was down because he wasn't pleased and you know there were so many bodies around that pile I don't know if there's gonna be a good enough angle to say one way or the other if the ball was in or out I mean there are just so many bodies on the ground and I think unless you can see a definitive knee see that angle there doesn't show the timing of it says he might have been on the ground but you have to be absolutely certain in, over, in order to overturn this. And can't see the knee. And the ball's there a little bit earlier than I thought. But the first angle I thought we got may have gotten shown it best from the end zone because it looked like, again, maybe not definitive evidence, but the correlation of the ball popping out at the same time where it looked like his knee touched the ground. This is going to be a tough call for the officials up top. Let's see if we can see it one more time. As Brian Powell was able to the recover on the field the stands. Fumble. fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down, Gremlin. 
could couldn't see that uh, you know couldn't see through the woods too many trees yeah. down there hanging around and just could not see and a tough break for Jackson State Here's Hickbottom Hickbottom still on his feet and Hickbottom slides near the 30 yard line but Jeremy Hickbottom is off to an excellent start at the helm for this Grambling State offense He's been in control, and when your offensive line's doing the job in the trenches, then you have that opportunity to find your second read, and if that's not open, still able to run. This defensive line from Jackson State must apply some pressure. Here comes the blitz. Big bottom, able to let it go, and the pass incomplete. Intended target was Darrell James. And I think on that one, we see defensive coordinator Dennis Thurman getting a little bit frustrated at the lack of pressure from his defensive line. Alexa get a little risky, play man coverage and blitz his two linebackers trying to make Hickbottom feel a little bit uncomfortable. It was the defensive side of the ball where Jackson State felt pretty confident as this pass is complete. Again, Brooks with another reception. Brooks is an excellent story given the fact that he tore his meniscus. So this is his first game in nearly two years. He is a speedster out of Austin, Texas. There's Dennis Thurman. Played at USC. Dallas Cowboys in NFL, longtime NFL veteran coach. Third and one, and Hickbottom just cut short. Markel Gladney in on the tackle. Jackson native. And, and that can't happen. If you're that close to the first down marker as a quarterback, you have to know where you have to get to. Seemed like a lackadaisical effort by Hickbottom to extend to get the chains and now forcing the fourth down when you only needed a yard. That is the end of the first quarter. Well, that concludes the first quarter and so far, Grambling State continuing to dominate this series. They're up 14-7 after one. What's your and? Back here at Grambling State University and 14-7. It's the Tigers on top and this is their SWAC opener and certainly Coach Prime is getting a taste of what it's like to be on hallowed grounds playing in Eddie Robinson Stadium and taking on a tough opponent like Grambling State. Fourth and one coming out of the break and Warren Newman back to receive it for Jackson State. Rugby style punk once again. Newman picks it up and collects a couple of yards. So Jay, observations so far from this Jackson State offense and, and just how they have uh, been most effective when they have moved the ball. I mean, they can throw the ball. We know that Jalen Jones can throw the football. They've got big wide receivers that they can use to their advantage. So they win that matchup with the one-on-one. -on -one. It's just getting to that second level, not able to establish the running game. And I really feel like the speed of Grambling defensively is giving the Jackson State offensive unit as a whole trouble. Jones sees it pop right back to him after he hands it off to his running back. He loses it. It goes out of bounds and very fortunate for the Tigers. Is this speed on defense or what, Tiff? When the ball's being snapped, look how quickly they got in the backfield. and Jones able to bail him out. And right now, the Tigers just trying to find some rhythm on offense. Second and five out of that busted play. Jones hands it off to Clark. And Clark may be good for a couple. Number wow. 95 right there. Javon Carter in on the stop with Wesley Green. The obvious passing situation, but number 75, Jalen Jones, the left guard, 
his helmet comes off, he has to leave. Now you've got to bring in a backup left guard and freshman John Mitchell in hope that he can protect the quarterback in this passing situation. Jones staying alive, moving around that pocket, back trotting, lets it go, finds an open man, and Kylan Ritchie, and what a play by Jalen Jones to keep that one alive, stay on his feet, and connect with Ritchie. Absolutely, because the protection was not there. But a good job of just extending the play with his legs, and then when he realizes he's not going to be able to run for the first down, look at the vision downfield to see the tight end, Kylan Ritchie, coming across the formation for the first down. And that's what Jalen Jones can afford you as a dual-threat quarterback. Outstanding athlete can do just a little bit of everything. Jason Phillips talked about Gremlin. just the progression. That's the first time out of the half. Since the start of camp, timeout taken on the field, 13-23 to go in the second quarter. We'll see you right back. Or to get excited about. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart. Elder rush for the other one. Well, good look at the quarterbacks here. Jeremy Hickbottom, who has gotten off to a really efficient start, punched one in with his feet. Meanwhile, Jalen Jones, four or five, just 40 yards. However, he's starting to get some momentum going here on this drive. Remember a couple of weeks ago, he had a great outing against Edward Waters, 17 of 19. And when we talked with Coach Prime, he said, yeah, but I still want more. Both quarterbacks playing well. That's when you say, all right, let's look at the scoreboard. And I think Jalen Jones has played well. I mean, this drive would have been over if not for a fantastic play he made to keep the drive alive. And Hickbottom doing a good job, proving that he deserves that start. But still, good offense in that first quarter. And I'm sure Jalen Jones realized that this may be one of those games where we're going to need touchdown after touchdown and can't settle for field goal attempts, which could be the key. Takes a snap on second and nine, finds Warren Newman, and Newman, a uh, senior out of New Orleans, Louisiana, a guy who offensive coordinator Jason Phillips is really high on, just lightning in a bottle. You saw just a little glimpse there and some great hands coming across for that quick catch. Call him one of the most electrifying players in all of FCS football. If you haven't seen Warren Newman on the football field, he's a treat to watch. When he gets the ball in his hands, special things can happen. Coming off a really productive year. So now first and 10 red zone opportunity for the Tigers. Kamani Clark, Clark with the first down and more inside the 10. That's, this is what you have to do. Versus Grambling, you got to find a crease. They've played a three defensive line man front. Find that crease and slice them up for some big chunks of yards. Clark gets the carry again. He's stuffed inside. I'll tell you, Hershey Williams has been active on defense and several hats running to the ball for Grambling State. I like to go play action here in this situation here. Make him think you're going to run the football again off tackle, pull it, and maybe see if you can sneak in a slant route behind the linebackers. Instead, it's Tyson Alexander who has swung down. Alexander, the sophomore out of Soto, Texas. Four carries and 11 yards. Down. The season opener. Timeout taken by Jackson State. We'll stay here and Jay, when you're when you're talking about there was so much anticipation, there was so much hype, and everybody wanting to see just what Jackson State was going to look like. Your initial impressions of this group? I see a team that cranked up the intensity level. I mean, they're flying around the football, and they said they wanted to do that. Uh, they got to learn to play within the whistles a little bit, but 
we haven't been talking about Jackson State being this aggressive on defense in a long time, so you can tell the intensity is there. When will it catch up and start to see results on the football field? Offensively, they're still looking for the identity. I think we see that right now. They can score. They've got some weapons, but still not quite where they need to be, but they will get there, and it's a much improved team early on from what I've seen. This is a group who last year went 4-8 and eight overall on the season, had three SWAC victories. They're trying to pick up their first of the spring season. Jones keeps it himself, swirling around and into the end zone. Jalen Jones says, I'll decide to call my own number, keep it. And the dual threat quarterback is in for the score. Yeah, this is a naked bootleg, but they just can't get to him. Great job of sealing the edge by Robert Washington, the tight end, not allowing the linebacker to have a free release on his quarterback. But you know what I really like about that? At the end of that play, that celebration, Jalen Jones went up to his left tackle and gave him the football. And at times, Jones struggled a little bit last year. They thought he was a me, me, me guy transferring in from Florida. But that's showing me some maturity. When you go up and give that ball to your lineman, when he easily could have celebrated by himself, that's spreading the love. They like when you do little things like that. Offsides. Defense, number 94. Half the distance to the goal, replay it down. So another extra point attempt on the way. Just a little bit closer. And this one hits the upright. It's no good. So Jackson State can't complete the extra point. Meanwhile, Jalen Jones keeping them in this ball game. It's 14-13. Zero alcohol. Well, Eddie G. Robinson, five decades as the head coach of Grambling State University, retired with the most career wins. 17 swag titles, absolute greatness, putting more than 200 players in the NFL, including four Hall of Famers. And you think about the architect of this Grambling State program, synonymous with legacy, tradition, and winning. The G-Men have sent four to the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Jay, when you look back at what Eddie Robinson's legacy is like, my goodness, you have to just bow down. He set the standard for what a coach should be. And he would be up before it became popular, he was raising young men to be successful in life. That was a challenge that he had. And everything he went to do, I mean, Doug Williams didn't happen by accident. He said, I want to have quarterbacks get drafted from Grambling, and his legacy lives on. G-Men are continuing to forge ahead with Broderick Fobbs now at the helm. And he has been molded by Coach Eddie Robinson. And when you think about the winningest coach of all HBCUs and really 408 career victories, uh, yeah. But you don't just like his accomplishments on the field, Jay. You always talked about Eddie Robinson the man and what stood out to you most about him uh, one wife <laughs> one job one school how many people can say they can accomplish that in life and the pride every time you're around somebody to play football or grambling it's all coach rob it's all coach rob always and the impact he had so many years later for so many years of coaching that just shows that he was able to transcend when times change he still was able to become and be remain a factor new quarterback in is elijah walker 
transfer from Heinz Community College, and, and Walker hopes to continue a tradition that was set by Eddie Robinson with James Shaq Harris, Doug Williams, later, you know, Bruce Eugene, now Elijah Walker gets his shot in this offense after Jeremy Hickbottom had a wonderful start uh, in this game. <laughs> that's why I'm shaking my head, Jim. You, <laughs> you saw the head scratcher. I mean, we knew that Walker was going to play, but Hickbottom was playing lights out. Hold on to a one-point lead right now. Your starting quarterback, Hickbottom, was playing well. A little bit of a roll of a dice here, but... The previous play is on the further review. Well, I'll tell you this. We have seen coaches uh, know something, see something, feel something, perhaps that, you know... We don't know, and, and, and Hickbottom, even though off to a great start, maybe Coach Broderick Bobs and Mark Orlando, the offensive coordinator, know something <laughs> that we're not seeing is that last player is under review, Donald Johnson, on the catch. That Kendrick Paul, the safety number 24, comes up at the end of the play. and Is he a defenseless player? I mean, he's clearly going down. Lowering that crown. This. I think this should be another targeting ejection. And, and give credit to the booth. I don't mind if you slow it down if you get it right for player safety. But when you've got guys coming in taking, I'm not going to call them cheap shots, but shots that are not allowed in today's college football game, they've got to get the message. Well, this is the third play that's been under review for targeting. We'll remind you of the rules again. After further review, there's no targeting on player number 24. No targeting. And so, Jay, you felt like he was launching or lowered his head into a defenseless player. Uh, yes, yeah, so when you see the forcible contact to the head or neck area, helmet to helmet, you know, from that type of play, that, that, that's a targeting call. Nice throw and just out of the reach of Donald Johnson. So Elijah Walker tried to connect with them, taking a shot down field on third and seven. But going back to that play, Jay, I, he's coming in even from that angle you can tell the defender is lowering his helmet and from a side angle you saw it even more more i mean that was a hit to the head if you're trying to get helmet to helmet contact out of the game how do you allow that to happen kendrick paul fortunate he wasn't called for targeting we've already seen one ejection with jb and adams out of the game Rambling State on the punt. And here's Warren Newman with a fair catch. And so you saw the decision there from Grambling State. That maybe kind of stagnated their offense just a little bit. Meanwhile, Jalen Jones, he has the keys to this offense. You know, so much has been talked about with Jones and where he will fit with all the newcomers expected to flood this roster next season. And as of now, you know, offensive coordinator Jason Phillips says, well, he's our starter for now, right now in this season. So here's here's his chance to, to prove and, and, and get more reps before Shadur Sanders may challenge for that quarterback role. And I thought the answer that we got from Jason Phillips was, it was accurate, right? I mean, you're the starter. You're the starter, but the for now part of it kind of makes say, well, that's not really too confident. But in defense to the Jackson State coaching staff, they say they want competition at every position, every practice, every week. And they got a new group of guys, much ballyhooed recruiting class that's coming in. They want guys to compete on an annual basis or a weekly basis. Jones spins it out of there. There's Dalen Baldwin. Baldwin with the Jets down the sideline and in for the score. Baldwin 
didn't get a chance to compete last season, sat out because of transfer rules. Came over from Morgan State, and you see the big wideout making a difference here. 64 yards for the touchdown. If you've got big targets, use them. Get them the football and let the size advantage come into play. And we talked about Jalen Jones just continue to distribute the football, making the right decisions and reward it there. What ball would make it a explosive play for the touchdown. Jalen Baldwin getting love on the sideline. And then you see him tiptoe that sideline in for the score. Coach Brock saying, let me run with you, brother. 50 for $3.79 a month at your local Infinity retailer. Jackson stayed on the road in their SWAC conference opener. They're up 20 to 14. With 9.05 remaining, Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you. And uh, I'll tell you this, much renewed sense of energy, excitement, and effort that we've seen from this Tiger ball club. And, and it paid off, you know. They missed an extra point, but they responded. You're starting to see the key is, are they starting to believe? in what coach prime you start to believe in the offense when the offense puts up points versus a good defense and the explosive plays are there that becomes contagious i believe that's the mantra for the season under coach prime on the return is cj russell and russell is wrapped up meanwhile jay we were just talking during the break we saw elijah walker take snaps in that last possession, Jeremy Hickbottom comes back onto the field. How does that get into the head of a player who who was playing a really solid game so far? Yeah, I, I did not like the choice when they made the decision, but you know, that's why we're in the booth and they're down on the field. They get paid to make those type of decisions there. But I just thought when as a quarterback, being a former quarterback myself, when I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Don't don't pull me out. If I make a mistake, maybe. But it was, you know, predetermined that we were going to see Elijah Walker. But I think to bring him in when Hickbottom was playing the way he was, maybe bring in Walker to start the second half for the first two series. But we'll see if they can gain back that momentum and Hickbottom can continue his hot playing ways. Toss on the outside, and Aubrey Miller was there to bring down and greet Keelan Elder. Third down for Grambling State. And this is important for the Tigers wanting to reestablish now with, again, hit bottom back in the game, sets a man in motion. No flags on the play. Hit bottom completes to DJ Clark. Rather... There is a flag on the play, just came out late. We've seen a lot of laundry on the field so far in this first half. Jay, everyone's settling in, players, coaches, and officials. A, a lot of penalty flags before the snap of the ball. We haven't seen the traditional ones like the holding or the, the, the face mask type. We've seen targeting and we've seen false starts. And this one may be an offside. Offsides, defense, number 90, five yard penalty. Second down. Correction, third down. Now, Jay, I, th I thought that was a third and four, so that five yards should have given Grambling State the first down here. You saw it. Okay. <laughs> that was the same thing. This should be first down. Maybe it was just not told the right way. So they're saying third and one. Keelan tries to push ahead for a yard, and I don't know if he got it, Jay. Met up front from the charge. I don't know if he got it there. Aubrey Miller was coming in strong. If he needed a full yard, then he I think he's going to be short. 
I think the question becomes, do you go for it? Great job of shedding tackles by number 96, Jermaine Crane, followed up by Aubrey Miller to finish it off. And if you go for it here, I wouldn't be surprised if Grambling went for it here to try and get a little momentum back, but nothing really says you should go for it in this situation except that you lost a little bit of momentum. And you think you can pick up a half yard, but obviously Robert Cobb's not seeing it as such. Delay a game against the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. The penalties starting to mount up for both teams. And if you're Broderick Bobs, who always talks about the discipline of his team and making sure they're doing the right things, you can't shoot yourself in the foot like that. Just backs him up a little bit. And on the punt here at Urban. And it's out of bounds. We saw Jalen Jones on that last drive doing an outstanding job. Six of seven now for 131 yards passing. Three TDs in total. One on the ground, two through the air. I mean, your assessment of, of Jones's afternoon so far? He's playing like a quarterback that's comfortable in the system. A sense of urgency, but still playing within the game, playing within the offense. What they're asking him to do when the protection breakdown, he's shown the athleticism to pick up positive yards on those breakout plays. Very impressed with the job that Jalen Jones has done so far in this football game. Clark on the carry. Sees a couple of black jerseys. Jones able to get it off in time. And he connects with Warren Newman again. This is what you want when you're gonna, if they wanna blitz and bring that extra linebacker, you would love to just slice them with a wide receiver, bubble screen, something like that, and get rid of the ball quickly, get up to that second level. I'll tell you, Grandma was fortunate they didn't give up more yards, because that was actually the perfect play call for that weak side blitz. Pick up of 12. Jones keeps it. Jones still on his feet, first down. Jalen Jones starting to pick up the momentum and feel it even more. And a great decision, realizing that the running play was going to be stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Jones calls his own number, pulls the football, and turns what was going to be a surefire negative play into another Tiger first down. You see the sophomore just getting more and more confident back there. Tyson Alexander. Popped real good as he goes down. Quincy Mitchell delivering the blow. Well, this has been a fun start to this game. We we talked about how Grambling has, has really controlled this series as of late. Winners nine of their last ten, but, but Jackson State trying to change the tides here under Coach Prime and start a new era. Taking a look, Jackson State, their last win over Grambling State back in 2012. As Tigers are searching for a big road win here today. And it was a dominating time for Grambling State football, but to think these programs, they all think neither one of them is, is that much better than the other that you should have a nine-year win streak on them. So I'm sure they're a little bit frustrated, and that's why we've seen a number of coaching changes at Jackson State University, which led to Coach Prime coming down to Mississippi. Nice move by Tyson Alexander. Alexander moving aside into the end zone, slams it on in. Alexander. First rushing touchdown of the season for Tyson Alexander. 
Jackson State letting them know we're on the scene. We're here. Check us out. He was described as an explosive runner, and it's one thing to be explosive to have the ability to get to the second level, but the better thing is having the ability to have the balance to finish off an explosive run and end up with pay dirt into the end zone. A 33-yard touchdown run for Tyson Alexander. Jackson State is starting to figure it out on offense, and you see it clicking right here. And after Anderson missed that extra point, new kicker in, it's Glenn Masai. It's up and in. Well, I'll tell you this, three offensive possessions for Jackson State, and they all in the same way with a touchdown. Great job of answering the call after grambling, grab momentum of the game, scoring 14 straight points. JSU mounts their own little drive, and I think the folks are, are starting to realize we could be on to something down here in Jackson. The faithful fans of Jackson State Good number of them made the trip out here to Grambling, Louisiana. And they're cheering on their team. And I know they like what they say. But, but let's give it up to this. Here's a little fact that a lot of people don't know, Tiff. We know it. Who's got the largest fan base in HBCU football? The SWAC. Who? Yep, but what school? Big Blue. Leads the SWAC in attendance every year. Jackson That's State. Good. What school, here's I got to put on top of it, what school led FCS football? All of FCS, not just HBCU, but what school led all of FCS football in attendance last year? Jackson State. I'm going to go with Jackson State. <laughs> oh, now they Jackson. drill down in the capital city of Mississippi. So when you give me a program that's got a fan base that loves their team and the program that produces... Walter Payton, Lynn Barney, Jackie Slater, and you get you bring in some extra showtime with prime time. It could be something really, really special going to take place in Jackson, or it could go really, really wrong. Well, let's be clear. I made that clear. There's no gray area with the prime time experience down in Jackson, Mississippi. Well, I'll say this, Jay. So far through a full game and a half, we've seen it work out so far for Jackson State because everyone was saying, all right, well, their season opener against Edward Waters, certainly that was an expected outcome of 53 to nothing trouncing over the NAIA school. However, this was going to be a game that really tested and be, to see where Jackson bounds. State was, the measuring Veterans state. had elected to take the kick at the 35 yard line. I agree with you, you know, on that one. The 53, okay, some people thought that score could have been 70 something, nothing. They weren't going to count, but this 27 points Correction. we're seeing in the first half, Grambling first scrambling, those are real line. numbers. Those are real points. This is a conference game, and this offense from Jackson State has traveled. Went through the hands of a Jackson State defender. James trying to say, I, I caught that. But it's incomplete. See, oh, fortunate that ball was not intercepted by Keontae Hampton. It's like that ball dragged against the turf. And that's a player we haven't talked a lot about for Jackson State. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The previous play is on the full review. Keontae Hampton, the preseason SWAC Defensive Player of the Year, led the conference in tackles a season ago. He saw the ball just slip through his fingertips here and nearly caught by James. 
your hotel room because it's almost that time for the fourth. Jay, I don't know if that touched. I don't know. It, it looked not. like it bounced off the top <laughs> of his hand. It does not. That that's gonna, that could be a catch. I think the angle we saw prior to that show, that ball does not hit the ground. And great concentration by the tight end, James. Hampton's going to wish he was able to make that interception. But if you slow it down, does the ball ever touch the turf? That's off his wrist. And he gets the hand underneath. That's right, yeah. Looks like a catch to me. And like you said, that was... Excellent concentration. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass, so they'll make sure they review this and see if they can get the right call. Boy, James has played a nice game on the outside. That would be a 15-yard catch if they overturn it. But either way, it, it, it's worth noting you know, the fact that, you know, COVID co caused a lot of things. And for James, that time off, he was able to benefit from it. Really working over the offseason. After further reviews, the call on the field has been reversed. The pass was completed. It'll be first down, Gramlin on the 35-yard line. Clock operators start the clock on my ready. All right, so it's a 15-yard completion for James. James, we talked about that work in the offseason to try to become a better route runner, but you saw the great hands there. Big bottom, too tall for James as he goes back to him again. And that's a miss, and that's something that Jackson State's going to have to shore up. They are allowing... James too many free releases in the middle of the field he's finding the crease between the linebacker and the safety and the zone coverage and with a more accurate throw that could have been a big play for Grambling State and now one of the luxuries that Grambling's able to afford themselves right now because Jackson State can't get to the quarterback with their defensive line with the pressure, you can go empty backfield. And this, you spread them out like this, the defense has to show you your hand when there's pressure. Big bottom being chased out, releases along the sideline. Does Kobe Ross come up with it? They say yes. First time this afternoon we've called Kobe Ross. Avoid pressure and delivers a ball to the outside. And great job of concentration, keeping the feet in bounds by Ross. That's big time. Yeah. Has long been seen as one of the most exciting players in this Grambling State offense. Normally operates out of the slot. Says, let's keep it going. Hick bottom with the defender in his face. Let's it go. Has a man in the end zone and incomplete. A little bit too aggressive by Hickbottom in that situation. When you've got the empty backfield and they bring six, you know you only have five. Take some short. Hit a crossing route versus the man-to-man -man coverage. He had a slot receiver that came wide open in front of him that probably would have ran into the end zone, but he elected to go for the deep shot over the top and took a hit and also an incomplete pass. the hands and incomplete to James. But now you can see Hickbottom starting to sense a little bit more of the pressure on those last two throws. The defensive line is encroaching closer and closer to him. They're trusting him though. They're, they're trusting Hickbottom to say, you know what, we'll go empty backfield if you make the right pre-snap read where you're going with the football. They may bring a running back in there just for a little support, but that's just token support. They would like to spread out this Jackson State defense. Gremlin, that's the third and final time out of the half. And you see Coach Broderick Fobbs just shaking his head. This is a, this is a team who has played exceptionally well 
at home. They've won 16 straight. Obviously, that streak is on the line here today. It's the second best streak in FCS behind North Dakota State. I did not know that. I would have said maybe a James Madison would have been there, JMU, but wow, that, that's impressive there. Remember last time we saw Grambling in person play, it was when they were taking on an all-court team that was heavily favored here, and Grambling State was able to knock them off in a classic overtime game. So it's well-deserved. That 16-game home win streak, that, that's well-deserved. They've beaten some good teams here, faced some challenges. Hit bottom with nowhere to go, and he was swallowed up. Miquel Pillow Smiley, among others, got to him in time. They've been waiting. That has to be a little disappointing because Grambling put a running back in the backfield, but it seemed like that was motivation. And now we talk about things becoming contagious. Look at the defensive line. This is a good job of covering the running lane. There's no escape routes and collapsing the pocket. Great job by the front four. Finally able to get to Higbottom. Also in on that was that bull rush there from Vincent McIntosh. He's been pushing the pocket further and further back. 49-yard field goal attempt, and a penalty marker comes out. The layer game against the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Now you punt. So they're going to move you back five yards, which was a 49-yard field goal attempt. Now it's going to be a 54 Time to punt it away and hope your special teams can pin them deep. Well, Grambling State was the team who came out hot. Looked to have that momentum, but Jay, I, I still go back to when Jeremy Hickbottom was taken out and Elijah Walker was put in. It's, it's not all on the offense, don't get me wrong, but that to me was was a shift. That was a turning point in this first half because since then, the Tigers had been able to figure it out. And you know what else, too? I'm thinking about when Hickbottom left. Remember when Hickbottom on third and one gave kind of a lackluster effort in getting that first down? They had to punt the ball. Then you saw uh, Walker come in and, not blaming it on Walker at all. He came in there, it was just there was a hot hand in the game, and they made that change, and the offense has not been able to move the football and score since. And I'm sure they're, they're scratching their head, but there's a lot of football left to be played between the quarterbacks, and I would not be surprised if we saw Walker again at some point. They believe in this young man that much to give him an opportunity, but it is a head scratch. Meanwhile, the Tigers can pin their ears back as... Jackson State deep into their own territory after the punt, 36 yards. And coming right out of their own territory, there's Tyson Alexander, and Alexander dragging a pile with them. Find a crease versus a three man defensive front. Get a white jersey up on the second level and Tyson Alexander for somebody who's supposed to be strictly an outside runner, showing he's able to run between the tackles pretty good. Gave them the breathing room they needed. Jackson State trying to engineer another drive that results in a touchdown before heading into the locker room. Tigers taking their time. Again, they keep it on the ground. A little bit surprised. That they, they took their time getting up to the line after getting out there, you know, being backed up in their own end zone. You get a big run, then you get to the line of scrimmage. I would have thought they'd have gone in the hurry-up two-minute offense, but they looked to kind of slow it down, possibly content going into halftime with at least a 13-point lead. 
We'll see if they can convert here on third and five. Jones rolls out to his right. Jones trying to beat the defender, able to scamper out of bounds. And he's close to the first down marker. Did he pick it up? Nice job with the naked. He realizes he's got room and real estate to run out front. And now will be the time where you, you go for it. You're on the road. It's conference opponent. You can really try to almost bury this team at halftime, give yourself a big cushion. I'd like to see Jackson State become more aggressive here and let Jalen Jones throw the football. Working with a first fresh set of downs, the handoff to Alexander. And Jackson State has two timeouts remaining. Are they going to spin one here or be content to let the clock wind down? A little bit surprising. Yeah. I think at this point, you know, no real sense of urgency. I think they're content going up 13. If they can pop a big play, they may do it, but they're not going to force the issue and risk the turnover. Well, remember that they also will get the ball coming out of halftime. That's why you really go for it. <laughs> you got an opportunity to put a team down by 20, then get the ball back to start the half and maybe go up by, you know, outside that three score margin. So a little bit surprised by this decision to slow it down before the half because what you'll learn in the swag, 13 points can disintegrate with a, with a sack and a fumble and a strip fumble. So they certainly know how to put up a lot of points in the swag. Met quickly there by Hershey Williams. Williams with a tackle for a loss on Tyson Alexander. And that is the final play of the first half. Coach Prime content to trot into the locker room with his team. They're carrying a 13-point lead on the road against Grambling State. Jay, this is a group that will gather themselves at halftime. They'll get the ball coming out of the locker room, but you just didn't like that decision to not try to put up some more. No, when, when you're playing a conference opponent, you got them on the ropes, you go for the knockout blow. I mean, you absolutely do. It's not going to take much. We saw quickly when... Rambling offense gets it going. They can put up some points in bunches there a little bit, so you put a lot of pressure on your defense. An entertaining first half. Off to a quick start. Jackson State on top, 27-14. Hart Nissan and Mechanicsville or online at hartnissan.com. Beautiful day for football from... Eddie Robinson Stadium in Grambling, Louisiana. The Tigers out of Louisiana trailing 27 to 14 at the half, but it's all good. The world fame marching Tiger band in the stands. We're at home missing being there, but certainly great to be on the call. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, and, um, you know, we have not been able to give the people what they want for a little bit now. It's a segment that uh, you created some time ago. And uh, it's one of those things where you're teasing you me. Always, Come on, Tim. You're yeah, teasing yeah, you me. Give them what they want, Tim. Give get, them what they want. Oh, you always seem to get a lot of attention. And because you always got something to say. How about give me five things that you like to know about Grambling State University? Thank you, Tip. Come on, first time in a while. Give me five. Give the people what they want, Tip. They like to see the quick release, the accuracy, the throw of one of the greatest quarterbacks in MEAC history, by the way. But it's not about me. How about five things you have to know about Grambling State University? Number five, Tip, this is for you. Erica Badu went to Grambling State University. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Uh-huh. Rimshot called Tyrone. Other side of the uh, game. We're not going to okay, talk about okay, Tyrone. Okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number four, it's Grambling. It's football legends. We're talking about 
the four Hall of Famers, but what about names like James Shaq Harris? We talked about Doug Williams. I'm going to give you the Bruce Eugene's of the world, the Jake Reeds, the Poncho Glovers, all these legendary players. Oh, this was a school built on football. I like to say sometimes that the football team went in good, might not have a school. Controversial. I'm just playing with y'all. <laughs> Number three, Willis Reed. I just hauled to the football school. Uh, hold up, Jay Walker. Willis Reed, legend in New York. Nick Infamy. He played his b-ball down in Grambling, Louisiana. Number two, they're not famous. They're the world fame marching tiger band of Grambling State. They performed at inaugurations, Rose Bowls. They've been over to Japan. One of the most famous bands out there, and if not, you don't believe me, they'll tell you. That's why they call themselves World Famed. All right now, okay. Hmm. So I like that list. That that was that was really good. Like now I'm I'm just having uh, this like giddiness, this excitedness because I'm waiting for number one. Yeah. This is the most obvious answer in, in HBCU sports and landscape. Number one, it is Grambling, right? It's Eddie Rock. And we talked about the importance of number one. One school, one wife, one job. That is Eddie Robinson, the best to ever do it. But you're going to like this. How about on the bubble? Can you pronounce that word, Tiffany, on the bubble, what I got there? Orcasis. That's called no. a... It's no? the Orchesis. Oh, orchesis. They are you. the dance company of Orchesis here at Grambling. They go along with the world fame marching tiger band so the orchestras are in the house here those are the five things you need to know about Grambling state university and extra shout out to one of my favorite on-campus radio stations k gram k journal kgrm on campus right here in Grambling, louisiana repping you know grand fam is pretty big around the campus as well Jay's give me five. You know, you can always debate it. Hit him up on Twitter. We'll come right back. It's not just any beer now, is it? Dos Equis, the most interesting beer. The swag is back playing football, but some major moves prior to the spring season. How about Alcorn State, the defending swag champions, opting out this season? Meanwhile, some waves coming over from Florida as the Rattlers of Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman Wildcats will be joining the conference. That'll cause some realignment for sure. But I'll tell you this, Grambling State's like, okay, that's cool. We're still going to vie for a SWAC championship. They want to be in the hunt. But, Jay, it's a big deal that Alcorn State is not playing this season. I mean, all corners own the East. Six consecutive East titles. They were basically a shoe-in for the SWAC championship game every year. But this year, they're opting out. So that leaves it wide open in the East. It becomes who's going to get it. All of a sudden, from what we're seeing, this Jackson State team may be a legitimate contender to make it to the SWAC championship game in their first season. That would be shocking, but it's doable. It's doable. And Tiff, I know there's some schools out there that you like in. You said your little favorite to win the SWAC East may be who? Alabama A&M, led by the preseason SWAC Offensive Player of the Year, Aquil Glass, and Connell Maynard has a 7 nothing advantage on the road against South Carolina State. That's a great game. Yes, and that's a very good defensive squad for South Carolina State. So Alabama A&M, they're a lot like Jackson State. They're offensive-minded. They're going to put points on the board. Looks like the... That's a Bulldog versus Bulldog matchup. Alabama A&M yes, Bulldogs is. versus South Carolina State Bulldogs. But the boys from Huntsville with the early lead in Orangeburg. And Pine Bluff, surprise, up three zip on Southern early. Southern would be the team I would say would be the favorite to win it in the West. So that is a little bit of upset. Arkansas Pine Bluff had a great season last year. Last time they were on the field trying to see if they can keep it going, although they've lost some key pieces. And welcoming in a new head coach in Doc Gamble. Gamble along with Deion Sanders. The two new faces in the SWAC will be back with more. Talking Grambling State and Jackson State when we return.
It's a movement. HBCU culture continuing to be brought to the forefront. Let's take a look at the latest episode from our series, Why Not Us? All right, a couple of things. I don't know if you guys already heard the news, but Bethune-Cookman canceled that season. We got to look at that and say, okay, it's a gift and a curse. The gift is we don't have to travel to Florida two times and we can preserve our budget. The curse is we still need four more games. And I'm not quite sure they're going to be the only one. The goal for North Carolina Central Basketball is to make it to the Sweet 16. In order to make it to the Sweet 16, this year during this pandemic, the NCAA is mandating that you play at least... 13 games. We don't know how many games we're going to be able to get in because trust and believe there's going to be some cancellations. If those games are taken away, you, we don't get what we call the guarantee games where we get an opportunity to go play the larger schools and, and get paid. When you go play those big schools, they normally give you a check in range from $70,000 to $95,000. That essentially funds your basketball program. North Carolina Central, the focal point of the series. This is an all-access docu-series executive produced by NBA All-Star Chris Paul and ESPN's Stephen A. Smith. It's the first project to debut under the undefeated over on... Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by McDonald's. Double-digit halftime lead for Jackson State in their SWAC road opener in the Coach Prime era. And that second quarter was an explosion for Jackson State. They went off three straight possessions with scores, Jay. Yeah, they got the athletes involved in the game. The dual threat quarterback, Jalen Jones, with the bootleg. And then you saw the explosive play by Dalen Baldwin, which was a big one. And then they got it done with Tyson Alexander with a huge run. It was the athleticism that showed up for Jackson State, which helped them gain command and control of this football game. Well, Jalen Jones incredibly efficient already on the afternoon, carrying over from a couple of weeks ago, 127 yards in the air and two TDs as well. So Jackson State is feeling good right now. And what do you think that message at the half was like from Coach Prime? Finish finish. They, he knows that this is a Grambling State team that's going to have some fight. You're not going to come in here and blow away the Tigers, but he demands for them to get better. Keep in mind, when they beat Edward Waters 53-0, he wanted more. He said he wanted more from Jalen, so the mantra at Jackson State, we don't settle for anything. Get better every play, every series. And we'll see if Jackson State can get it done. When you look at Grambling State and what they did in the first half, picked up 173 yards of total offense but you think about this tiger group who last touched the field march 4th and that was when they were preparing for spring ball and then everything came to a halt so this is their first game of the season it's been more than a year since they played competitive football game. They're trailing by 13 here as Jackson State gets the ball to start the third quarter. And I believe one of the keys is going to be what defensive adjustments do they make defensively with their defensive coordinator ever tied. They came out with an initial game plan, but JSU figured out something and started getting the ball on the edge to those athletes. So I think if you're Grambling State, you go back to basic football, keep everything in front. Jackson State has earned your respect offensively. They can hurt you with big plays, so make them drive down the field lengths and take time off the clock compared to hitting you with the big play over and over again. They've got a call on that D-line, a three-man front, Sundiata Anderson, Wesley Green, and Cameron Richardson to try to attack more and get a push up front. The handoff to Kamani Clark, and 
Clark is brought down as he tried to take it to the outside. That's the part there where you live with that. Another thing outside of, you know, the schematically, they've got to tackle. You know, big plays normally happen off of missed tackles. Do a better job of tackling in the second half. Dunn was credited with that last tackle. Second and seven. Clark to the left of Jones. He gets it again. And once more, this time it's Lewis Matthews on the stop. Now here's the play here. What do you do? So that last defensive front, they covered up every gap. That was a run-stopping defense. Now this has been the problem when you've got Jalen Jones with the ability to throw the football or run the football. And even when you bring pressure, he's shown that he can get away. So the pre-snap look says they're not going to bring pressure on Jalen Jones. Thinks he's earned that respect. They keep it on the ground and doing a good job of stopping them where they start is Kobe Foster. Foster and the Tiger defense along with Anderson able to hold him there. It's fourth down. And the Grambling defense did the job. They got the stop and did not allow Jackson State to increase their lead. Hopefully the offense can get it going when they get the ball back. Second punt of the ball game for Lane McGregor. Well, you go back to Jeremy Hickbottom in that first half, and, you know, he had a good start. They gave him the ball. They let him run this offense, and he was able to figure it out. Ball distribution and decision-making, they were on point. He missed a couple throws, but they were good decisions where to go with the football. You know, had command of it, was on cruise control, but then got taken out of the game, lost a little bit of momentum, and, really was not able to get it back. And we'll see what he does in the second half. Well, they start him out with something pretty easy. One of his favorite targets here was Darrell James in that first half and James with the completion. Once again, you see them targeting the big tight end out of Tallahassee quite a bit today. Yeah, that's a good job getting the ball to him. He had three catches for 60 yards in the first half, starting the second half where he left off. They got to figure out a way to cover up that tight end if you're Jackson State. They try to hurry up quickly from the line. And on the run is C.J. Russell. Russell wrestled down to the ground by Aubrey Miller, Jr. On the carry again, Russell once more. And Khalil Harrington up to drag him down, but that's good enough for a first down. For C.J. Russell to be just a freshman, he can hit that hole quick. He's got that little burst, you see. Doesn't take him long to get from zero to 60. You see quick tempo for this offense for Grambling State. How does that help your offense and maybe catching the defense, getting them a little tired? Yeah, you know, try to wear them out, and particularly the guys up front. You know, when you've got guys that weigh 300 pounds on the defensive line, after so many plays, they want to get a breather. And so they'll start sucking wind a little bit, and you give your offensive line a little bit of an advantage. So you do the hurry up to change the tempo on them, and, you know, you want those defensive linemen putting those hands on the hips, and then hopefully if you're in offense, they go from the hips to the knees where they need some more wind. Russell gets the call once more, able to break a tackle up ahead. And C.J. Russell, they continue to call on number nine and black, and he continues to deliver. See, if this is a fresh defensive lineman, he makes that tackle. But when you're a little bit tired, your arm's a little bit late to the punch, it's an arm tackle that Russell was able to run through. They're slowed by Pillow Smiley, third and one. That was a great stop there. Forcing the fourth down right there. The decision for Grambling State looks like they're going to go for it on fourth and one. 
Again, C.J. Russell has his number called, and I think it's good enough to move the sticks. That was close, but it's that lean we talked about. Had enough speed and momentum going to get that lead, although the initial contact was there behind the line of scrimmage. Fortunately for him, Pillow Smiley reversed him and kind of tackled him forward instead of sticking him backwards. It's a Louisiana product, six most rush rushing yards in the state of Louisiana in high school. Hick bottom keeps it himself, slides. Good run on first down. Is that a late hit in on the quarterback? He gave himself up and still was hit. The end of the run. He's giving it up. <laughs> what do you think they're going to work on in Jackson, Mississippi next week in practice? Foul. Late hit against number 19 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. <sighs> You know, one of the things that Coach Prime talked to us about during the week, and it's something that they're reminded of because they have wristbands on, talking about playing smart, fast, tough, and disciplined football. And right there, a little undisciplined. things I'm seeing here from Deion Sanders trust in his cornerbacks man-to-man -man coverage with the wide receivers normally down in the red zone you like to give them some safety help but take a look top of your screen you see that that's that's press man they're not going anyway mano -y mano no safety deep they're playing man up and when they, as a quarterback you got to know that means they're going to probably blitz you and bring some pressure that's the way Deion Sanders used to do it as Hick bottom it's inside the 10, but you think about the two cornerbacks that they have for Jackson State, DeJon Warren, we talked about the Juco transfer, a guy that they're really high on, and also Isaiah Bolden, who came over from Florida State. So these are two guys who are proven winners, who have the ball skills and have the talent to be able to get it done. He described them as pros. He said pro talent. And I like the challenge. He said it's kind of our job to get them to that next level. And I think the corners have done a pretty good job today. Tony Ross and this officiating crew have been busy here this afternoon. All start. Offense. Number 74. Five yard penalty. Correction. It's third down. So that pushes the Tigers back five yards. We talk about things that you can learn from this game and what you're going to work on in practice and certainly getting the snap count right and trying to alleviate some of those misses and into the end zone and right into the hands of D.J. Clark. Go get him, son. A 15-yard touchdown pass and catch from Hickbottom to Clark. Yep, and the protection was there and able to secure the football. They found those creases in the zone coverage for Jackson State. Nice recognition, accurate throw. And didn't I tell you, these boys from Bramlin, Louisiana weren't going to go away now. This is their home field. They're going to fight, and they're right back in the ball game, Tim. Indeed, and the New Orleans native... DJ Clark with an amazing story. We'll tell you about it right now. He celebrates after that touchdown. Xfinity, the future of awesome. DJ Clark, one of the G-men who has just an amazing story. He's 
coming back after being shot four times in an accidental shooting death that claimed the life of his brother Keon outside of a gym in New Orleans. He missed all of last season. And this is a guy who Coach Broderick Fobbs has been so incredibly high on just because of his toughness, just because of his leadership and his smarts. Check this out. DJ Clark, amidst all of that adversity, was able to still walk across the stage, claim a diploma as he finishes his degree in criminal justice. And now the graduate is back and making an impact as he finishes out this 2021 season and he hopes to do so in dramatic fashion. Getting that degree makes him officially part of the grand fam, as they like to say. What resilience, you know, he displayed after what he went through and for him to come back better and stronger, the G-men are better with him. And Coach Bob said, you know, everything that was so bad with losing a season to COVID, not having the fall, said had we played in the fall, DJ Clark would not have been able to play. But because he was able to heal more and recover, more recovery time from the gunshot wounds, He's a guy that gets to play this spring and will be back next year as well for them. So when you take a, 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 a bad situation and you make it better, that's a great job by Daryl DJ Clark of taking advantage of the situation. Too tall and nearly intercepted by Devonair Martin. Martin saw it slip right through his fingertips. Martin, one of those players that coaches believe is just an incredibly talented guy. Remember, he was playing alongside a former first-team all-swag cornerback at Joe McWilliams back in 2019. Tyson Alexander who had himself a good first half. Slammed to the ground, Alexander is the leading rusher. He's a good one there. You saw there just on that, that run that shows up there. That was a pretty fantastic run with him having the ability to stop on a dime, bounce to the outside, keep his balance, and pick up eight yards on that play. Third down, two yards to go. Jalen Jones. Finds Newman. Newman able to stay on his feet. Get cross the 40-yard line and keep going. And a good job by Dalen Baldwin, number six, the big wide receiver. So Newman's a smaller wide receiver. He's just 5'8". You give him a bubble screen, you need those big bodies to block and seal the edge. And Baldwin did a good job at the top. Jones rolling out. Dumps it down to Newman again. Newman with the cut. Good job by Jones. You talk about a quarterback extending the play. That was an extension of a play. The defense did a good job of sniffing it out, but threw that ball across his body to Warren Newman, who made a couple guys miss. And that could be coming back. Illegal man downfield against the offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. It's on the transfer left tackle, Tony Gray, coming over from UCF. Uh, let's see, quarterback is in the play. You see 74, he, early on, he was four yards up the field. Easy for the official on the opposite side of the field to see, but it's still a pretty fascinating play from Jones. Jones nearly intercepted, bounced right into the hands of Martavius Dotson, and Dotson knows he should have come away with that one. And his teammates are giving him a hard time because you practice for that play. You anticipate it. They say, oh, if they try and do that, look for the ball. He looked for it. He was in position, just not able to haul it in for the interception. Missed opportunity for a big play, but still a good play nonetheless by Dotson. Defense! 
Jones up the middle and Jones across the 40. Flag coming in late. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense number 85. Also, unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense, number six. That's both players' first unsportsmanlike conduct. It's third down. Because it was after the play, so the yardage will stand, the offsetting penalties will stand, so it's still that third down situation. I don't like that. You know, you don't want a, a game's getting tight, emotions flying high. You don't want a you know, little jaw back and forth to have a detrimental effect on the outcome of this football game. Brings up 39. Jones lets it go quickly, and Baldwin is the recipient. Baldwin, the junior out of Southfield, Michigan, with the catch. See, Mitchell was there to bring him down. Man, this is just a curl route. Run past the stakes, get the defensive back to turn his hips, turn and stop. That's a timing route. Nicely executed. Nice recognition by Jalen Jones. 15-yard pickup. Tyson Alexander again. What cuts, what moves on the outside. And then you see... As he was out of bounds, a penalty flag flew into the air. You see Tyson Alexander run the football. You just know something good can happen. Look at the balance. Watch the jump cut. Get in, get out, give him a hip, take it away. I'm not done. Nice little shake and stays on his feet for more yardage. And that is a penalty. Tack on another 15 for the late hit. Out of bounds. Flags on the play. Flags on the play. Alexander made after the play personal foul hit against number 24 the defense 15 yard penalty first down made a couple of defenders miss Riestis the guilty party with that late hit out of bounds We'll see if Jackson State can answer with a scoring drive of their own deep into his own backfield, and he keeps going backwards. Grambling defense was there to swarm around number 25 in white. And that's how you have to get to him, because Alexander's shown the ability to make the first defender miss. You have to get hats to the football, and after the defensive end, Anderson was not able to make the tackle. There was that quick, speedy linebacker core to finish off the deal to make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Lewis and Powell teamed up for that five-yard loss. So pushing the Tigers back out to the 25-yard line. Second and long. Jones nearly slips, stays on his feet, keeps it alive along the left side, has a little room. And he drops out of bounds. A little bit of improvisation by improvisation by Jalen Jones. I thought he had a little bit more time to go with his read in front of him. You call that rollout there's, to the right. There's going to be no wide receivers open left. It becomes just a sprint. He picked up some yards, but I thought he should have waited that out a little bit more. But the athleticism, when you've got legs like Jalen Jones, Jay Walker can't say nothing because I couldn't do that. <laughs> You know your pure pocket passer days. And Howard. On third down, Jones feeling the pressure, able to escape, lets it go, and incomplete. As a quarterback, as much as college football evolves, it still comes down to the, the winning teams normally have quarterbacks that can make throws from the pocket. 
You cannot make a living throwing on the run all the time. And once they start getting on the same page with the pocket passing game, then you become a more efficient offense. And that last two pass plays they called, that was a little bit more scramble type drills. Noah Anderson on to attempt a 35-yard field goal, and it is no good. So it's been a rough afternoon for Noah Anderson. Six-point ball game here at Grambling. You can't have it all. Arguably the most famous football player to come out of Grambling State, Doug Williams. Boy, he certainly made a name for himself, but he was groomed by Coach Eddie Robinson going on to be selected as the first African-American quarterback in the first round of the NFL draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and made some more history going on to win a Super Bowl with the Washington football team. You know, that's the legend, but man, how sweet was that picture seeing the throwback uniforms of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? <laughs> Cream -sickle. Cream -sickle. <laughs> that's right. Happened to be my hometown, also known as Tampa Bay right now. <laughs> but I think the impact that Doug Williams made on the game shows you the roots. And it all started with Eddie Robinson. Eddie Robinson wanted to have a black quarterback drafted to the National Football League. That was James Shaq Harris who set the standard. And then Doug Williams came and followed in his footsteps. And then all of a sudden, having a black quarterback became nothing. It became, oh, he's just a quarterback. You think about just what Eddie Robinson did. He did it quietly, but he just had this great passion to do something extraordinary and you think of taking an agricultural institution of about 5,000 students and then growing it into this football powerhouse all of the Pittsburgh Steelers of college football any named story franchises across all of sports and the names the players that have worn that uniform that have come through this university have been absolutely outstanding. On third and six, Jeremy Hickbottom continuing to keep the play alive. His feet get him a first down and more. When you have a pass rush that gets a little bit lazy, there's some creases. And as a quarterback, we call them escape routes. So he knows where he can escape. Pressure here, outrun him. That's the athleticism. And then where's the rest of the white jerseys? Why weren't they around the football? What was that we said earlier? Eddie Robinson coached over 200 professional football players. That, that's a lot. That's a lot. It's quite outstanding. No one even could come close. And look, we have seen a number of outstanding coaches throughout black college football, both past and present. But he was the torchbearer. On second and ten, and the pass complete on the outside to C.J. Russell Russell showing off the hands out of the backfield. And, and that's a good job of getting out to the flat, securing the football. But once again, I do like how Jeremy Hickbottom, he seems like he just has command of this offense. When you're a fifth-year senior, you should have command of the offense. And he's going the right place with the football giving his receivers an opportunity to make plays after the catch. Third and one, he hands it off. And Keelan Elder, Elder, we mentioned back in the first half, one of those strong running backs for Broderick Fobbs on the carry there. Would you call him part of the Grand Fam for real? His dad was a running back in Grambling. Uh, He's yeah, and running his back. mom graduated from there as well. Boom! Hit stick, and a penalty marker comes out after Kendrick Paul connects. And, and, and look, we have seen a number of aggressive plays from the Jackson State defense. I mean, this is the one where... I mean, it almost looked like it was either a textbook tackle or it was clearly helmet to helmet. That's what they wanted to flag. 
Personal foul. Targeting against the defense, number 24. The previous play is on the review. You make the adjustment. You, you, you know they're calling it tight. You make the adjustment. That being said, was it helmet to helmet? What we thought was just a hard football play. They're taking a look at it. No, we'll see if he's able to stay. And what pocket you keep $6 in. Arby's fish sandwiches are now two for $6 and part of Arby's everyday value. Arby's, we have the meat. Last play under review as Kendrick Paul was whistled for a target foul, but they'll take another look at it in the booth. Kobe Ross is a recipient of that big hit. We'll see what they were able to sort out. Out the further review, there's no targeting on the play. However, the play results in the first down. And that's where the, the rule change is. So he can stay in the game because there's no targeting, but you cannot pick up that flag. So that 15-yard penalty that they throw initially, that's going to stand, and they, that's why Grandin received the first down. Fifth targeting called. Whistle for targeting and review so far in this game, all against Jackson State. When I saw it, it looked like a bang bang play as we keep it flowing. Markel Gladney in on the tackle. One thing we can say about Jackson State, although some of the hits have been questionable, this is a very physical defense. Mm -hmm. They're coming to make tackles with bad intentions. And, and Jay, quite honestly, obviously you have to do it in a safe manner, but that's the mentality. That's the mindset that you have to have if you're a defensive player. I mean, you show me a passive defensive player, and I'll show you somebody getting pushed all around the football field. Uh, but, but however, you, you have to realize college football for safety reasons, and I agree with it. Sometimes, you know, I'm a former quarterback. I think they protect the quarterbacks a little too much, but it's the right thing to do. And there's a way to coach them to get your head out of the game, your helmet out of the game, and start using your shoulders. Meanwhile, when you're looking at this Jackson State team, how are they performing? Are they meeting the expectation or the standard that you think was set by Coach Prime? Because some of these guys came in, they were kind of starstruck by what Deion I Sanders. What, what I think the, the what I think the area of concern about Jackson State is going to be, if you bring too many transfers into a program, and some people say they're transfers for a reason. So I just wonder how many transfers are they bring in? How does that mesh with the high school kids? He's got to find a good balance there. You know, we talked to him. He's got the marketing strategy there. This young, this man is going to do everything he can to get his players into the National Football League. So if I'm a parent, I'm all for that. That's what you want most coaches do. He just happens to have a bigger magnifying glass than most coaches do. So he's going to put it all there. But at the end of the day, you got to win football games. And right now he finds himself in a close football game. Grambling State on the move. Second and 13, and the pass is complete to DJ Clark. And I'm going to give the credit again to 68, 65, and 74. Look at the job they're doing on the left side up front. Egan Atkins, Jordan Ikfase, Kyle Davis, the center. The pocket is there. And as an offensive line, that's what you want to do. That's your job, protect the quarterback. And Hickbottom's done a good job when he's got the time of picking apart this Tiger defense. Three receivers set. Time winding down in this third quarter. Hickbottom with time. Connects with James. James, good enough for first down. They go quickly. Again, Hickbottom hands it off. And Brooks is stuffed. Brooks not been able to really get off. They thought he'd have a little bit more of an impact in this game. And he too, like DJ Clark, missed the 2019 season. Trying to find his rhythm back with that explosiveness. He's that change of pace back that they like to bring into the game. 
It seems like Grambling's set to go into the fourth quarter down by six. That'll be the last play. The Tigers of Grambling State driving. Fourth quarter action to try to settle this one when we come back. Injection site reactions and constipation. It doesn't matter what each day brings, so long as you can say, I am here. Aim to be there more. Talk to your doctor about Aimavig. We've got a ball game, folks, in the SWAC opener between Jackson State and Grambling State. It's been an entertaining one, and Jay, Jeremy Hickbottom, is trying to find a way for his group to really catch fire here in this fourth quarter, and he's done an excellent job with the keys of this offense so far. He has, and these are the games you have to win to be a Grambling State quarterback. One of the most valued positions in all of college football. They want him to win football games. You talk about Grambling, the quarterbacks, I mean, even modern era. We talk about Kendrick Nord, Randy Himes. How about this recent name, Devontae Kincaid? Oh, yeah. Found a way to win these type of football games. So when Coach Bobs talked to us and said, you do some good things, but at the end of the day, your, your record's a little bit over 500. That's not good enough by Grambling standards. So here in his senior season, he has an opportunity to say, you know what? I want to be a Grambling quarterback that's remembered for what I did on the field. Second or two of nine on third downs, but great throw and catch. That's DJ Clark. First down and more. He said, keep on feeding me. I like this. Look the safety to the left. Stick a seam route to the right. Great release. And we've seen, you know, I got to call it out, Aubrey Miller's a thumper, number 45, the middle linebacker for Jackson State. He'll hit, but we've seen him give up some big plays behind him in pass coverage, trying too hard to get close to the line of scrimmage, and Graham done a good job of exploiting that. He's got to do a better job of dropping in his coverage. Well, Hickbottom, we saw him as the leading rusher last season, able to get it done with his legs, but you have to be impressed with the way he has been able to complete passes, and as I say that, that one overthrown, but efficiency, efficiency we've seen from Hickbottom today. I don't think you could ask for much more in the opening game of the season for the Tigers. Show command the offense, been able to move the football, no interceptions. Right here, this is that part of the field where I'm looking for number 80. Girl James, this tight end who's been able to win those those matchups versus the linebackers from Jackson State. Five catches, 86 yards for James, including a touchdown. And Grambling State will talk it over, spend a timeout here, Jay. Watch that. Tight end yep. timeouts become valuable, particularly when you're losing in the fourth quarter. I'm just going to say that. We'll step aside with them. Come back with those mighty high standards in that salad bowl, because that's what makes us whole. Coach Prime in his debut game as a SWAC head coach in conference play, going against the Steady Eddie. Broderick Fobbs in his seventh season. Great ball game here as the Tigers of Grambling State, the G-Men inside the 10. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you. And, and this has been a fun one so far. Nice back and forth affair. It was Jackson State who took the reins and Grambling's just trying to play catch up now. Fobbs doing against the Tigers. That is the seventh false start for Grambling State in this game. Can't, can't win a lot of football games Mike. like that. Broderick Fobbs, his team had played since November of 2019. Pick bottom with time. Feels the pressure, lets it go! And is it intercepted! Kevin Berthy came down with the ball, but a flag on the play. One time seemed like Hickbottom took a chance and just kind of threw this up for grabs. 
Jackson State might have come away with a huge interception in the end zone, but let's see what the laundry is about on the field. Pass interference. Defense number four. Will be placed on the two yard line. Automatic first down. Wow, so Dijon Warren called for the pass interference. And you see him running into the receiver with his back turned. That, that is the right call. Absolutely. He impeded Raylan Richardson, who's a six foot four inch wide receiver, from having an opportunity to go for the football, to leave his feet to jump. That's a great call by the back judge. And a huge one in favor of the Tigers, and it's Elder to punch it in. Just like that, folks, we're tied up, but another penalty marker is on the field. That's, that's going to be a after the touchdown. He spiked the ball. They're going to get him for the celebration. The results of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense, number 23. That's number 23, first unsportsmanlike of the game. They call his number up the middle, makes himself small, explodes through the hole. What the spike. You, you can throw up your hooks. A little bit too much, and we'll see if that cost him on the ensuing kickoff. Urban trying to give Grambling the lead for the first time since the first half and is able to do so. Grambling State reclaims the lead. The strong, compact running back, Keelan Elder, picking up his second TD of the day. Real done, the barbecue sauce? Mm. Sonic Mesquite Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. That's what I'm talking about. Jackson State trying to snap Grambling State's 16 game home winning streak. You have to go back to 2015 since the Tigers lost at home. But Jay, during the break, we had a chance just to have a quick discussion about the decision after that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty to not maybe assess it on the kick, uh, excuse me, yeah, on the you, extra point. Yeah, you get the opportunity. You can either take it on the extra point attempt or when they kick it into the field. Most times you have them kick from further back like they will the 20-yard line, and you're going to win the battle field position. However, I'm going to say, you know, kicking's been shaky right now. You know, by both teams having demonstrated a strong kicking game, and Grambling folks will know they won the celebration bowl. Their victory when they accepted the excessive celebration penalty on the extra point, North Carolina Central missed. Grambling won 10-9. That one point there, I'm not saying that's going to be the end all, but in that situation there, I would have made them kick it from 15 yards deeper. Instead, Grambling has a one-point advantage. Josh Littles. Josh Littles keeps going. Josh Littles still on his feet and out to midfield on the return. This Jackson State team, we saw them really catch fire in that second quarter. Three straight touchdown drives. Since then, just one touchdown on their last five possessions. Get the ball to the playmakers. I thought the wide receivers, Corey Reed and Daylon Baldwin, presented problems. I'd find a way to get them involved. Here's Tyson Alexander. Alexander continuing to move and groove up the field. He's closing in on 100 yards. And the ball came out at the end. Was he down as Alexander was looking good? Yeah, I wonder, did it come out or did they just take it from them when they were blowing the whistle. 
Grambling definitely came out with the fist. That ball is down. Did you see that ball in the bottom of the pile? Good Hard job to getting see. up to the yeah, line Jackson of scrimmage with the snap. That's right. Same time, Jay, we understand that for progress, not reviewable. So, yep. If it were blown, which they would have had to listen for that too, but there was a big pile there. That ball was on the ground at what point, but it's all for naught. So, Jackson State with the ball, and they're in Grambling territory right now. Second and 11. Alexander gets the carry again. Alexander continuing to make cuts. And bringing him down is Brian Powell. You'll see it here. Just the ability to explode upfield quickly and change directions. I mean, he made a linebacker miss in a small space. The play on the outside, and that's Warren Newman, and Newman is in! I said, get the ball to the athletes. <laughs> get the ball to athletes. And it was really complimented by the running game of Tyson Alexander. But we know what Warren Newman can do when he gets the football space. I mean, he's on the short side of the field. Watch him just weave through <laughs> untouched into the end zone. Man, he can do it. Yes. Newman, who had a touchdown a couple weeks ago, adds another here. Four plays, 50 yards on that Jackson State drive. They regain the lead, but continue to have trouble in that kicking game. Ouch! Once more off the upright. All things are going well offensively for Jackson State, but the special teams let them down again. But how about this? Warren Newman, the senior from Nolens, Louisiana, getting it done. Jackson State back. Now, try GNC Amp Sustain Protein in on-the-go cereal flavors. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Very good crowd on hand at Eddie Robinson Stadium. 50% capacity, and certainly they're witnessing an excellent ball game and the home opener for Grambling State, but it's the Tigers out of the SIP. The 33-28 advantage midway through the fourth. And you knew the game would be, this is always a classic game. Two schools are like two hours away from each other, straight shot. JSU fans excited about their new coach and Grambling trying to see if, is it the same JSU they've been seeing for the past decade or is it a new JSU and both teams after the early sloppiness of the game have really come out here and fought hard in the later half. I tell you this, Jay, you think about since 2014, it has been a roller coaster of seasons for Jackson State, 23 and 44 during that time. They've seen five different head coaches in seven seasons. And so Coach Prime is hoping to establish this new era in the capital city. Take over that dominance. Then you compare that to Broderick Fobbs, who's been around for a little bit now. You, you see the winning records that he's had three consecutive undefeated seasons in conference play, a celebration bowl title to go on top of that. This is you know gonna be a fun thing. one. Now, you know the key thing to folks in Louisiana is those two consecutive uh, Bayou Classic losses. Oh, yeah. You can have great years, but they, they made it known your number one job is to win the Bayou Classic. Donald Johnson on the return, and the ball may have come out, come out at the end. And it appears Grambling State contains possession. Right there it was Dwayne Pickett, though. Yep. He's down right there. 
Jake, talk about that Bayou Classic, one of the great rivalries in college football. This year won't be in New Orleans. They move it to Shreveport. Yeah, like I said earlier, they're going from the gumbo to the crawfish. So we'll see how that <laughs> how that body's going to shape up and be interesting. Take that game around the state, but that's during the season, during the regular football fall season. That is a state holiday in Louisiana when Grandma takes on Southern every year. Hey, Tim, every now and then as a quarterback, you got to check your manhood, see how uh -huh. tough you are. Uh -huh. Kick bottom just passed the test. He okay. in that play. And this right here is a quarterback's worst nightmare. Coming right up the middle. Nowhere to go. You know you're going to get hit. Chuck it and duck it. <laughs> that was a chuck and duck throw. You have to talk to your offensive lineman in the huddle after that play there. Mm. That's why I'm glad I'm in the booth, Tim. <laughs> Crane was bringing the pressure. Hickbottom on third and nine, and Hickbottom trying to extend the ball out there, trying to get close to that first down marker. And, and, and he didn't he didn't want to feel another blow this time. Keontae Hampton bringing him down. And I like that effort though. Remember in the first half, see, I'll give credit where credit is due. Earlier, I kind of questioned, did he make a real hearty effort to go for a first down? Well, now he learned from that mistake in the first half. He put it all on the line that last play and came up just a yard short. Five punts already in this game. Urban with the sixth. And Newman collects it, returns it, and Newman is brought down. And you go back and you talk about that extra effort. I mean, he nearly picked this first down up with his feet with that effort. Yeah, and he left it all right there on the line and was very, very close to it on the spot, made it about the spot. And on that plate, you can kind of hear it. It seemed like some of the Grambling State folks weren't too happy that Graham been elected to punt the football. Game like this, a lot of football to be played. You don't want to get a ball to Jackson State on a short field. I think Coach Fobbs did the right thing. Backed up too far to go for it on fourth and short. Jackson State starts their drive. Hand off to Kamani Clark. Not much doing. Clark, the more multi-purpose back, as we mentioned earlier. But for this game, it's been Tyson Alexander. I think the, he's been that difference maker for them. When you don't have a steady running game and you need explosive plays, Tyson Alexander's been the one to hurt him. Second and nine, feeling pressure from behind, lets it go. And incomplete bobble there, and Anderson brought the pressure along that backside. And, and Warren Newman, you're exciting, like everything you do when you have the football in your hands, but you must catch the football first. This is great play by Jalen Jones. Accurately thrown ball. That should have been a catch and a first down. Instead, third and long. Time. Jones sees black helmets and jerseys and ouch! Jalen Jones felt all of that. Ryan Fields popping helmets. It was great recognition by Grambling State. They tried to call the wide receiver bubble screen. They weren't fooled and Jones got spun around like John Elway in the Super Bowl. That's just a spinner. I, I, he took the helmet and the headband off. That's a football play. Now, I understand if you're Jackson State, why you're a little upset. 
because they've been called for a couple of them. But when you look at that replay, you see that was a shoulder and that was just a hard hit. And see, one of those things that you know, Coach Prime will learn over time is, you know, you got to massage the officials, got to work them, got to kind of get in their ear throughout the game. Nobody. I'm trying to think. Number 20 came in shoulder first, I believe. I'm... Are inaudible and the play clock will be kept on the field. So the play clock not working. I'm gonna keep it on the field. That'll be something to keep your eye on. And Martin watches it bounce, continuing to take a Jackson State roll inside the 20. Come on. Let's go. Folks, you're going to want to come back for this one. 9.32 to go. Grambling State up on the road. Jackson State trying to get their first win against Grambling State since 2012. They've dropped nine of the last 10, and Coach Prime has his group in position if they can hold tight to this lead, but still a lot of time remaining. And C.J. Russell on the carry. Nice pickup there from C.J. Russell. The young freshman sees daylight to the outside and explodes through the crease and touchdown saving tackle by Keontae Hampton. Big bottom again, one of his favorite targets today, Darrell James. James on the catch. James is having an outstanding game. And six foot three, 235 pound senior from Tallahassee. Getting it done today. Big bottom again, bobbled and held tight by Kobe Ross. So that's good enough for another first down. Once again, showing mastery of the offense, complete command. Jeremy Hickbottom, team trailing by five, but still making smart decisions with the football. Air front by the defensive line of Jackson State. Hick bottom nearly picked off by Warren. They confused him with the look. I knew something exotic was taking place when they put three defensive linemen to cover up the interior. So he's thinking he's getting one look, and that was that was miscommunication. He wanted a check off. He wanted a different route run by Xavier Cooper. Very fortunate Warren did not intercept that pass. Second and 10, clutched it back down the sideline and out of bounds. Pass incomplete to Ross, the intended receiver. Now you're at the part of the field where if you don't pick up all 10, I think you'll see Coach Fobbs elect to go for it. So as a quarterback, you're knowing if I get six or seven, it's two down territory. This stage of the game, pick up positive yards. In completion, you're going to be forced to punt it away. Tigers near midfield. Hick Bottom has completed two of his last seven passes. And that one is dropped right in and out of the hands. The first drop of the day from James. And it comes at an inopportune time, tipped. Jay. Was it tipped uh, underneath? They did a pretty good job of buzzing underneath. Number 96 is looking. He yep. tipped it. And that threw it off just a little bit. And the normally sure-handed James 
Not able to haul it in for the catch. That was Jamani Crane who got a hand on it. This went bouncing Jackson State's way and downing it near the 23 yard line. And if, if this is the way Smack play is going to start off, <laughs> open a week of the season, it's grambling. It's Jackson State. Only thing missing is the sonic boom with the South. I'm sorry y'all couldn't travel. That's one rule that they put in that visiting teams will not be allowed to bring their bands. So the home teams just really got to step up their game now. But this is HBCU football and the swag style on display here. This is a good one. This is everything that we had hoped for in this game. And certainly there were some question marks. Okay, well, how would Jackson State go up against this formidable opponent in Grambling State? And right now, Coach Prime and his staff have these guys ready. See, a heavy dose of Tyson Alexander. He, he would be the guy. I would say you have to show me you can stop him. Alexander again Alexander showing out the speed one man the beat along the sideline trying to do a little juke move uh, uh, running back of his talent if you stop him once show me you can stop him again on second down finds a crease cuts to the backside turns on the Jets and great job of running the football and give credit to the offensive line on that left side, particularly Jalen Jones and left guard and the tackle, Tony Gray, opening up that backside running lane for Alexander to explode through. 55-yard pickup for Alexander puts the Tigers in Grambling State territory and within striking distance again. Keep him out of the end zone. Keep him out of the end zone. We've seen Jackson State. They've missed two extra points today. I don't know if they would go for a field goal try here. So if you're grambling, you have to be thinking, keep them out of the end zone. Why do I say that? You may not be as aggressive with your defensive selection. You don't necessarily have to blitz the quarterback when you're just trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. Mighty Clark now in, giving Alexander a spell. Jalen Jones on second and eight, feels the pressure, lets it go. But nearly getting to him was that Tiger defense. They, they dialed up a little spy man blitz is what it was. So they actually had somebody spy. You, you see number number 20. Look at number 20 in your middle field. He sees it once. I don't have any coverage responsibilities and tell well, you what Jones Jalen Jones got out of the pocket but not by much a little bit closer than you thought it's Wilson number 24 Grandma State everything now everything in front of you third down they connect and find the big receiver Corey Reed That was one I was like, you, you keep everything in front of you, but they got too soft with their coverage, allowing the receiver. And he just runs down there, finds the sticks, turns around. And that was a big pickup and nice throw and execution by Jalen Jones in the JSU offense. Now first and goal. Clark spins around, still moving inside the five. Fresh legs kept in the backfield for Jackson State has served them well. The tag team of Clark and Alexander. I think down here they're probably using Clark a little bit more, a little bit bigger back, hold on to the football a little bit. Jackson State 
Ford red zone opportunities. Three touchdowns, a missed field goal. Clark getting closer and closer. He's moving forward, loses the football. Whoa. Whoa. Wow, this is going to be interesting. When are they saying that ball came out? If he was breaking the plane with the football, that's that's a score. But if it was prior to, that's a fumble recovered by Grambling. Whoa. And they're calling it a fumble. The ruling on the field. Fumble. Oh. Touchback. Oh my goodness. Quincy Mitchell coming up. The previous play is on the further review. Ooh. And I think it was his lineman trying to help push him into the end zone. That might have dislodged the football. Now, CJ, this is where the call on the field is so important because yes. now you have to have irrefutable evidence to try to overturn this. And from what we're seeing and these angles and replays, I don't know when it comes out and where he is. Does he cross the plane? He gets lost within the bodies. Yep. I mean, oh, that is just close. I can't be 100% either way, which is what you want. But then, you know, you, you want to say, when I look at the ball, it seemed like it came out pretty deep in the end zone. Was that that surge that got him in or not? I don't know if you can be 100% either way to, as what you said, Tiffany, overturn the call that was made on the field. They're reviewing this one, and man, this is a huge call because Jackson State was trying to make this a two-score game. Yeah, I thought they brought Clark in to be the more sure-handed, durable back. We've seen Tyson Alexander put a couple questionable balls down on the ground. Prime. This will be a big one towards what happens, but how about the comment that Coach Coach Prime told us about his team this year? What, what, what did he tell the whole, what was he telling, announcing to the whole conference? You better what? You better get us this year. Because <laughs> I got some horses coming, and I think that's going to be a challenge. He's saying if they don't get me in the swag this year, they're definitely not going to get me next year. Well, you said at the top of the broadcast, Jay, you know, a lot of these coaches around the swag saying, we're, we're not playing Dion, we're playing Dion's team. And so the guys have to get it done on the field. Let's listen to the ruling. Of the review of the play, the call on the field stands. Touchback. First down, Hamlin, 20 yard line. I mean, let, let me be honest. Did you wow. really think they were going to overturn that call no. in Eddie Robinson no. Stadium? <laughs> it's Eddie Robinson Stadium. It's a home game. Coach Prime wants to become the next <laughs> Eddie Robinson. Had they overturned that, oh, man. It would have been mayhem. And so now here's what you get, Tiff. If, if you're Jeremy Hickbottom, here's your opportunity. Your team is down. You're at home. And Hickbottom on the carry trying to shoulder the load here make plays make plays if you want to join the likes of a bruce eugene when gramlin was ever down bruce eugene found a way to win the game those type guys do it you're down by five at home you find a way to win the game to become one of those rememberable Gramlin quarterbacks remember Grambling State has won nine of the last ten, riding a 16-game home winning streak. That's on the line right now as the Tigers trail by five.
pick bottom with the pitch to Russell. <laughs> Russell right there. Russell still up past the 45. And he's finally brought down. You see that hesitation sweep? Look, look, look at this, the action by the quarterback. He's going to stab it like, oh, you got me. Give him the fake. Uh-oh. Pillow Swiley, number 94. You took it hook, line, and sinker. Raylan Richardson, Richardson on the outside. Richardson still going. So moving the ball effectively, getting some groove on this drive, trying to capitalize off the second turnover of the day from Jackson State. Pick bottom again. Good job. Got them on their heels right now. And you feel this scrambling offense taking momentum and Jackson State scrambling. This is when you need one of your leaders to step up and make a big play. Audrey Miller, Keontae Hampton, one of those guys need to step up and make a big play. Once again, the low show, the gift. Elder Keelan, Elder. Why are they playing with number 94, Pillow Smiley, so much? Same play, but he's got it sniffed out. You're not going to get me this time. Uh, <laughs> you're not even going to touch me. A little wiggle wiggle on the outside. Good for five yards. Elder on the carry again, up the middle. And Pillow Smiley bringing him down, but another first down. Important to this drive, keeping it on the ground, running time off the clock. This time to the left side, it's Elder. Elder again with another nice carry. Aubrey Miller on the stop, pick up of seven. You have to give those defensive ends some help. Brian Mitchell and Miquel Pillow Smiley, they're on an island trying to tackle running backs with a lot of space. That day, that play, was dead there. Prior to the snap, timeout, Gremlin. That's the first timeout of the half. Excuse me, second timeout of the half. 30 second and timeout. And Jay, we saw Grambling State take their first timeout with just about a minute in, in this fourth quarter, and now spending their second timeout, just one remaining and two minutes to go in the in the regulation. We'll see, you gotta value those timeouts when you're trailing, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I think these teams are really good teams and they'll challenge in the East. And, whoa. Giving you an, woo -hoo, an update around the SWAC and what's uh, popping out to you and probably everyone in SWAC Nation, what? Southern trailing yeah, UAPB I'm, at yeah, the half. Yeah, I'm gonna say, hey, Pardon my the way I pronounce it, the way I pronounce this, but both of them, both of them scores, <laughs> Tiff, got me yeah. surprised. A and M putting 31 points on South Carolina State in Orangeburg and Pine Bluff, hold, holding on to a 12-point lead at halftime over the Jags. Southern coming off an impressive victory last week versus Alabama State. UAPB, what's going on there in Pine Bluff, Arkansas? Doc Gamble says he's got him ready. The pitch again. This time the speedster, Brooks. Brooks moving to the outside, gets out of bounds. And they've discovered something schematically why they keep using that play. And so unless they make a change, and how do you defend that play? You bring somebody outside of that defensive end like a linebacker, which leaves you vulnerable because then you must crowd the line of scrimmage. They may continue to see that play. Trips right to the bottom of your screen. The handoff, Brooks. And okay, here come the G-Men. I think if you're Jackson State, you start calling timeout, but with Gramlin snapping the ball, I would have let him do it. I, I was surprised that Gramlin was getting up to the line of scrimmage so quickly. Jack State. But now, it's the Jackson State realizing... If they score, we want to give ourselves an opportunity to try and leave some time on the clock. 
Well, you talked about the play that it works so well and, and, and figuring out something schematically here in this timeout. Where do you make the adjustment if you're Jackson State's defense? Well, I mean, you're letting Grambling move the ball down the field just running the football. So they're spreading you out so they can run. At some point, you have to say, we've got cornerbacks. We're going to come up and crowd the line of scrimmage and force you to throw the ball. Force you to throw it. You've got some great cornerbacks that can play man-to-man -man coverage. You believe in those guys. You got to put them on island. You got to put them on island and make them, what we like to say, earn their scholarship and make a play for you. But don't allow Grandma just to continue to run the football. You have to do something to take them out of this mentality. Monty Clark's fumble will see if Grambling State can put it in the end zone. G.J. Clark is nearby. They say he stepped out of bounds at the two-yard line. Uh, if, if you're Grambling, you like that. You actually don't want him to score. If he's going to get the ball there on the two-yard line, you can, you can force Jackson State to use more timeouts. His foot was out. I thought the left leg was out. Elder, Elder, he stops short. You almost have to let him score right now. If, if you're Jackson State, you want to let them score. There's no rush. There's no rush for Grambling to get to the line of scrimmage. Why are they rushing? Elder lost the football. Kalen Elder lost the football. Recovered by Jackson State's Keontae Hampton. Unbelievable. <laughs> you have to love this game of football. The same the things that make you laugh fumble. will make you cry. They were laughing when Jackson State fumbled the ball in the, the end zone and grabbed them. Looked like they were going to drive to go back the other way. Well, the same things that make you laugh can make you cry. Great job by Aubrey Miller. Right. Aubrey right. Miller coming off the edge. The transfer from Missouri with the contact in the backfield. You see him come from there and watch him knock it loose. Oh, what a game. The play is confirmed. Turnover. And Coach Prime is pumped up. <laughs> oh, man. Out the Coach field of review, the call on the stand, field stands. First down, Jack State. First turnover of the game for Grambling State, and it comes with a minute and four to go on their one-yard line. Hey, what's up with this? What when they were this? on the ropes, and you what asked me, what do they need to do? I said, they need some of their players to step up and make a play. I thought it would be either Hampton or Miller. I know it would be both. Miller with the forced fumble and Keontae Hampton with the recovery. And Jackson State a minute and four seconds away from getting an impressive victory on the road. And this is where timeouts are not Grambling State's friend. They only have one remaining. Jackson State spins a T.O. Well, I mean, they are backed up, so they have to be thinking, we just really want to not get a safety in this situation so we can run out some more clock. So they want to make sure they've got everything going. Don't take the penalty where you move yourself even back a little bit more. And if you're grambling, you got to be thinking sell out, sell out run blitz. Jackson State sensing change already in progress, trying to reverse the outcome of the last 10 meetings against Grambling State. Good call, Under a minute from sneak. doing so. Yep. Grambling State has to spin their third and final timeout. And a couple of fumbles at the one-yard line on both sides. The story of this game late if you're just tuning in. I mean, this one here, just when it seemed like 
Jackson State was going to have an opportunity to go up by two scores. They fumble going in, and then when it seems like Grambling is going to score to go up with less than two minutes to go in the game, another fumble, and what a football game. Yeah. Can we get them all like this? Is that what prime time is going to bring the, to the game? We're going to have showtime every week. <laughs> Rambling State just sees potentially a victory. Another W at home just snatched away as Jackson State on the road. Swack opener. And Coach Prime allowing that time to wind down. Why? It's got to feel good for those newcomers, but especially for those who stayed with this Jackson State program. Final play of the ball game, and I'll tell you this. In his first conference win, Coach Prime is putting the swack on notice that Jackson State is back and they're coming for everybody tigers letting them know they can play in prime time first win for jackson state since 2012 snapping grambling state's 16 game home win streak they earned it you know what we talk a lot about coach prime what he's doing i'm gonna take a step back and i'm gonna give it up to those kids they fought when they had their back against the wall Looked like Graham was going to go up for the go-ahead score. They found a way to make a play. That starts, leadership starts at the top, but it has to be able to trickle down to the kids. And his quarterback, Jalen Jones, played well. And it was a hard-fought football game. And fortunately for Jackson State University, they came away victorious to start off the primetime era in SWAC football. An all-around effort, solid game from Jalen Jones, but in the end, it was defense. The Tigers' defense did an outstanding job, especially when it mattered most. Good afternoon for Jalen Jones, 12 of 17, 185 yards, and this one's got to sting for Grambling State. Anytime you lose winning streaks, you know, they hurt. And that, that was the one thing they could hang their hat on that, that we just saw. We just witnessed the second longest winning streak in FCS football get snapped by Jackson State at legendary, historic Eddie Robinson Stadium in Grambling. Jay, what a ball game. What a ball game. So much to come from the SWAC this season. And the Tigers of Jackson State saying it's only the beginning for Jay Walker and our entire crew. I'm Tiffany Green saying so long. SWAC is back.